This is an explicit podcast where we try to keep the conversations as raw and authentic as possible with no intentions of hurting anyone. So if you're very woke, religious, or sensitive, we highly recommend you do not tune in. <laughs> oh, things that you think that you shouldn't have said, just let me know, I'll take it out. If you feel like it. Yeah, no, it's, it's fine. Don't worry, no, no, just, just shoot, it's okay. It's already rolling. Yeah, okay, so you want to put this a little bit closer. Right. Right, what's up guys? We have Peter Davis in the house today. Hello, literally in the house, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, aka Pistol Pete. Yes, that was yeah. uh, a name given to me by... Uh, oh yeah, Paul. how did you come about the name? Well, you know, you're supposed to be given nicknames. I mean, I'd preferred something else, yeah. but uh, having a pistol and uh, being called Pete, um, I, you know. Do you have a thing for firearms? Actually, I do enjoy shooting a gun off uh, in in uh, first person shooters. Uh, oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> but no, um, so I got that when I was with Moifit back in the day, mm. and uh, Paul Chio, who was uh, running Moifit at the time, yep. just came up with the nickname, and I just I just kind of stuck with it because it's the only nickname that anyone ever gave me. So it's Kashido. Yeah, I just grabbed it. Yeah, yeah. For the older generations, oh. it would be. You know, Pistol Pete must have been a character in the old TV shows, I think. But, oh, uh, you, you, I, I wouldn't know, but ex- I, exactly. But for the younger generations, it's just something different. So just stick with it. So okay. yeah, sure. Okay, like you know what? Let's just jump right into because I spent this morning watching um, a couple of your fights, right? One championship fight. The ones where I lost. Yeah, the the, the two. Hey, man. More. Pre- <laughs> hey, man. Okay. It yeah, happens. Um, it I, happens. I, 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 so that was your last fight for one championship in 2016. Oh, Shannon Wirachai. Yes, yeah. Shannon Wirachai. 2016, fight- that long? Yes. Holy. <laughs> yeah, my goodness. Yeah, um, well, that fight made it into the the one's top 100 fights archive. Right. You know? so Mainly because of uh, Shannon, I think. <laughs> Not no, me. Uh, okay. <laughs> that's just, uh, I'll just give a little run through on that fight. So, so the first round, up till the last 30 seconds, it was quite even. Um, right. Even in the grappling, even in the striking. Till the last end. Yeah, no, I... Well, okay. Whack! S- douche! Boom, what? boom! You what? got smacked. Uh, okay, I think that's towards the end. I, I decided to run away, which is a bad move. Uh, I mean, you gotta it's do good. What you gotta do, man. You gotta do what you gotta do, yeah. but... Okay, um, one championship just changed their weight uh, or weighing in sort of... The weigh-ins. The weigh-ins, yes. Yeah. They, they they wanted to have all, all of the fighters... Sorry, athletes. Yes. That's what one championship says. <laughs> um, they want to have all of the athletes uh, doing urine hydration weight tests. Yeah. So that was the first time that that had happened. During that fight? Uh, yes. So during that fight, so that yeah. was the first time moving from weight class 70.3 kilograms. Yep. So then it moved to 76.9 or close to 77 on weight uh, hydrated okay which I could have done probably if I had more time to train for that sure. um, but also I turned vegetarian pescatarian at that time mm. so from the fight before to that fight my diet had changed so I was uh, I had uh, all these different struggles pretty much with the body and how it was readjusting it hadn't settled yet yeah definitely so the hydration tests you can kind of cheat them uh and i i wasn't about doing that so uh-huh. i just did it my way yeah so i kind of did a bit too much fasting and uh when i went into the competition i had 10 percent battery left so okay. i felt horrible i okay I, I wanted to ask specifically because i myself i follow a lot of ufc one fc pretty much uh not nothing right um you follow ufc I do, yeah, yeah. loosely. I'm, I'm, I, I got to say, I yeah. What's up? Even, even I enjoy drifting. I enjoy like UFC one championship. Uh-huh. I really don't follow anything particularly. I'm terrible. I, I'm a cyclist, avid cyclist. Oh, okay, I don't okay. know who's who. I, I don't. I'm not. I'm like, oh, I'm a big fan. Yeah, like yeah, Lance Armstrong. That's the thing. Uh, yeah. um, but Peter Sagan, like the names that are. Very obvious. I, I, I hate football. I love football. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I'm really not a fan. Uh, I just I just like to participate in the sports as opposed sure, to sure. actually um, watch it's, them. It's, it's not too uncommon. Uh, um, you'd be surprised, man. A lot of the even UFC fighters, mm. they don't even know who is the oppo- opponent that they're going to be facing. Yeah, I mean I they did. don't know much about it until it's <laughs> scheduled, and then they do like uh their their fight their team right will yes. do like the research for them. Yeah, they probably don't even pay attention. A lot of them are like that actually. Yes, I did. The, I I think I fit into that box <laughs> as well. <laughs> okay. So yeah, which part of uh UK were you from? 
Um, down in Brighton. So you've got London, which mm. is around about here yeah, in, yeah. The, in the bottom end, the mm. southern side. And Brighton is just straight down one hour away by train uh, on the south coast. Sure. There's probably uh, many Brightons in UK. Is that um, no, it's just just uh, just Brighton, Brighton. It's uh, you know Brighton, England, but you got Brighton in New York. Uh, okay, yeah. You got Brighton Beach in Australia yeah, as well. Mel- Melbourne. Melbourne yeah. I, I spent uh, quite a long time in. It's uh, not as good as our Brighton Beach. Uh, 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 we really? have we have pebbles and uh, and sand. It's just, yeah, no sand. No, Ooh, no actually, what? we also have. Uh, it's the gay capital of Europe. Not sure if it is. Are you serious? But, but those dudes, yeah, they brought a, a whole a whole bunch of sand and dumped oh. it on their area of the beach. So there's a new dispute. Wait, over did there. you say gay capital? Gay, I, I think it's the gay capital oh, of Europe. So, so you swing that way as well? Uh, th- no, I swing around them. But, uh, okay, okay. I, I, swear, I, see, I, hang, I, I hang with them, swing with them, but uh, yeah. no, I do my own thing. My, uh, sure, sure. You get a lot of attention from them as well. <laughs> I, do, I, I don't know, really. I just uh, I'm completely <laughs> completely oblivious to okay. everything. No homophobes over here, right? No, no, no. You're no, just chilling. No homophobes and no homo. Okay, so, yeah. Okay, let, let's dude, let's let's get back, get back to the fight. So the first round, okay, you were, it was quite an even fight till the last thirty seconds. He caught you with a good left hook, right mm-hmm. hook, yeah. And I think there was one more, and then you you fell. So right. a little bit of controversy. People felt like the fight was, um, it, it would have been stopped because the honestly, what was the referee doing? Like he you know, was, the, you're not doing, supposed to doing, do that, right? Doing signs to people. No, um, <laughs> So the bell went yeah. um, pretty much as he was saying that I got knocked the fuck out, pretty much. Yeah. I, I believe that's what happened. But then the bell went just before he did that. Yeah. So then I got saved by the bell, literally. Um, however, yeah, no, I, I didn't feel um, like I'd won that. I, I really, at that point, thought I'd lost. Um, yeah. But, you know, fair enough. It's the way it is. Yeah. Um, aside from... The weight cut issues and going in at ten percent battery, pretty much, or ten percent health. I'd Dude, say it was. Well, no, no, I got my eardrum burst in that first round, uh, so I don't know. The end? No, right, like in the middle somewhere. Do you see me stumbling a bit? I, Dude, I, I, I don't. The balance was. Be- off. I thought it was a like a your stamina. No, uh, no, it was. It was my balance went off. I could, uh, I couldn't really stand up straight. It was a bit tricky. And then mentally, I was dealing with the injuries I had from the fight before, yeah. which I had just recovered from. I got like two metal plates in my face. I can't feel half of uh, the nerves too well. So I wasn't sure how my, you know, the, the bone structure would take hits in a fight because yeah, I hadn't yeah, yeah. been hit since the last fight. Did you do any knocked. sparring in that training? I did, I did some sparring, yeah, but yeah. the sparring is, sparring, is sparring. Not, sparring's not the same. We don't have MMA gloves on and yeah, we yeah. don't take big hits and... When we're doing a jiu-jitsu, com- well, well, just jiu-jitsu training, mm. um, when people used to roll over me, you know, people yeah. roll over your head inherently, I could feel the plates and the screws like pulling around in the skull. So then when I went into to, to, to the bout with Shannon, yes. I had issues with the weight cut. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Where, where, where? So anyway. So no, 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 no. All good, man. It, it's true. So I had issues with the weight cut. You're not a fighter so anymore, energy, so all good. Well, I'm always a fighter. You're never going to... You never I, know I, one still, last fight. I'd still, I'd still jump back in, but I just keep messing myself up. Show me the money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, That'd yeah, be yeah. good. Um, yeah. So weight cut issues. So uh, energy level uh, mm. issues. I can never sleep before these things because mental illness was overthinking too much. Yeah. Wasn't sure how my, my skull was going to react to getting hit. Um, had my eardrum broken, so that burst, and then my equilibrium was off and couldn't stand up properly. Wasn't sure if that was something to do with the, the metal plates yeah. or or what, because yeah. you're just in there, and then you got someone trying to come at you and beat the crap out of you, and you're like, you, you're like, normally you'd be like, oh, I just fell over and I hurt yeah. my ear. Well, I wonder what that is. Oh, uh, Bob, can you can you help me? Can you see yeah. what what's up with the way? But you're in the middle of a, a competition. Yeah, you like, fight, dude. It's like, what are you supposed to do? Yeah. So, so yeah. Okay. So yeah. The <laughs> second round starts. Um, you guys got more than a minute to to break. Um, yeah. Fortunately. Yes. So second round started off. For the first minute, he was tagging you good. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And then towards the middle of that round. Yeah. That's I thought when he got exhausted. He? I think he started to get exhausted. Yeah, he did. Um, that's when things got interesting. Y- yeah, but I was also on, on I, I was on zero energy. You're on skates just, the whole time, bro. I was throwing things, yeah, I was just throwing whatever I could. Um, but I think Shannon's uh, cardio dropped off. So I was looking down in the comments, <laughs> right? And because the, the way that, 
Uh, of course, yeah, uh, yeah. not that I take the comment seriously. But no, no, I'm but of course, uh, people are not going to say good things. It's yes, of course. And yeah, so they course. were saying shit like, um, Shannon could have finished him off or Should've. Shannon Shannon is uh, like taking it easy. But then again, that's how he fights. He puts his he hands down and he He's pretty relaxed. I like his style, That's actually. his style. You know? And uh, I, you know, I'd have loved to have had a rematch at some point, but you know, no, I'm an old dog. Let's... Uh, okay, he has eight years on you I mean he's 8 years younger junior right right yeah so that's a big advantage in, um, in fighting I, I think so I, I don't know um, if you're going to be talking about um, things like now mm. I feel if I went back in yeah uh, and I had a proper training camp I'd I'd be stronger um, I'd have more technique more ability I believe in myself better mentally I'm becoming a lot more stable yeah. uh, and I already had that I mean there's been too much this cage rush now yeah. clearly but uh so all, all those things i'm really interested to ask as well but yeah back to that that point you so in the middle of the second round mm. you you caught him with a nice jab he came forward and he hit him clean whack and I, he fell down you pushed him down as yeah, well yeah I, I did gave him a little bit of a push to help the momentum so <laughs> yeah, unfortunately it wasn't a, a, a clean knockdown yeah shannon shannon ate it and i just like Go on, get over. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so um, yeah. yeah, from that point, uh, I thought, all right, we got something here. What was going through your mind? Like, that's what I really want to know. Like, just keep going, point. just keep going, go. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> really no, there's, there's none of that. I'm just like, keep going, push, try, keep going. Okay, let's do this. Let's go. Okay, right, do this. And you just, I'm just seeing him getting a bit more tired. Yeah. My my brain is fried. trying to work overtime, but yeah, yeah it's fried. Um, it's just, okay, just keep going. So, okay, yeah, you mentioned that your, uh, it, the, the changes in the weight cutting system, right, really took a toll on your uh, conditioning during that fight. It, it, it totally did. I was yeah. in good shape for that fight. And then um, I didn't know how to essentially cut weight for that fight because yeah. I'm so used to cutting like eight kilograms in 12 hours. So I, I normally I'd be like 78. Yeah. And I cut down That's to 70 fine. and roll back up. But because that was at my walking weight, yeah. I, I, my team, there, there wasn't enough, enough input. Yeah, so yeah. not enough manpower to go around. So, I mean, Aglan was fighting that uh, card as well. So, uh, they, they had to you know, split up yeah, the it's, it's all split up. Support. And uh, yeah, so f for me, with MMA, I'd never really felt, I mean, I've had a team, sure, mm. but I've never really had a team at the same time. And that's the whole career. Yeah. So I'm like, oh. I kind of figured that because, you know, it's so surprising that just last, um, this weekend's card, so um, Adesanya fought over yes. the weekend. Yes, He lost, mm. which was really surprising. Adesanya and Usman lost this year. Yeah. Um, which people thought that would be dominant champions for at least years to come. So yeah, anyways, there was this dude uh, on the earlier fights in the prelims, Ryan Span. So he, he knocked out his op opponent, Dominic Reyes, who is also one of the top dudes. So... And what's surprising is on the mic, because Joe Rogan was asking him like, you know, what happened, you know, that caused this like big change in your performance. And he said that he finally trained. He finally trained. Right. He's had almost 10 fights in the UFC. Right. And he mentioned that all the fights before, because he's a heavyweight, so they don't really cut. They don't bother. No, and they once just go. you once you don't have that, um, uh, what do you call that, uh, needed structure to cut the weight down, you might also tend to slack off on all the other yes, yes. Uh, aspects of training camp. So he he mentioned that his previous fights, he would train two to three weeks. And this fight, he had eight weeks, yeah. which is ideal. It's huge in comparison, yes. Yeah. And he probably had a team behind him trying to get things ready and uh, scoped out the uh, opponents. So yeah. What about sh um, the Shannon fight? How How many weeks did you have? To prepare. I, I cannot remember. It was a couple oh. of days ago, um, but I think I had a I had a pretty much a full camp. I had a couple of injuries. I, I think I just uh, had a broken finger healed up, so I had some issues with grappling as well. But yeah, I've always had a. Few That's issues. always the case for it, it is it is many many fighters, right? But I mean, yeah, no, and you, you're saying like halfway through things turned around. Yeah. When the fight got called, Joey, the referee, um, mm. he uh, called it because he's the guy that let me get a couple of extra hits in my first knockout, which is the fight before. Yeah. So Joey, the the ref, uh, let me let things go a little bit. Yeah. Um, when when Shannon was punching me when I was against the cage after he got me when I ran away, don't run away. It's a bad idea. <laughs> um. Because you can't see where the opponent is. Yes. So he got me with an uppercut, got me down. Yeah. And then Joey was like, are you all right? Are you okay? Like, yes, I'm fine. I'm fine. And then Shannon was, it felt yeah. slowing down. Yeah. I was letting him gas out. He was just punching my gloves. Yeah. And I was like, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm getting up. I'm getting up. And then he called it. 
So I could have continued actually oh, at that you, point. You, so fair enough, he was slowing down because yeah. right when the fight was called off, you, right. could, you could you could tell, dude. He was yes. sitting down and, you know, you would be, if you had the energy, you would stand up and I, celebrate, right? Yeah, indeed. I mean, I, I would have... I feel if mm. Jerry hadn't stopped it then and he let it, let it continue, oh. I could have turned the tables. Yeah. But uh, yeah, at the same kind of time, bargain. yeah, I'm, it is what it is. And yeah. I'm grateful that uh, the first round, the end yeah. of the first round, I was allowed to continue. Because yeah. if I wasn't, Shannon should have deserved that at that point then. Uh-huh. So I let Shannon have it yeah. quite happily because he already did yeah. a good job in the first round. But I mean, yeah, I could have continued. I'd have, I was literally, it felt like on a death's door. But uh, I'd have kept on going, yeah. Did they have a post-fight interview after that? I can't remember. You can't remember? <laughs> no. I, tried, I tried searching for a post-fight I, I interview. Don't, I don't, don't think so. There was, uh, there was no media. I think there were some uh, other big dogs in there and uh, uh-huh. they got their post-fight interviews. Yeah, I, didn't get, yeah. I didn't get interviewed. I didn't get to... This uh, is the post-fight interview. <laughs> yeah, th- this is essentially the post-fight interview. How, how did it go six years later? So, uh-huh. yeah, no, I... At the end there, I was letting Shannon punch my hands. Uh, yeah, I all. did say, all right, I'm getting up. I can get up. I'm, yes, I'm good. Uh-huh. But then Joey called it, unfortunately. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I often think if I could just transport myself back into the body and use like half a percent to just start yeah. to stand up to convince him a bit more, I could have swung that around in a big, you know. Yeah, come back. A big underdog finish comeback. Come back, finish, yeah. yeah. I, I'm a sucker for uh, underdogs. That. Yeah, and particularly comeback fights, you know, yeah, I yeah, always find myself rooting for the underdogs. Yes, yes, it's, it's uh, the same thing. I love it. D- did you have any? Uh, you see that, that that's the question. So I'm really not a huge fan. Fan. I mean, uh, I think things like uh, Anderson Silva. I love his, sure. his style, and I'm, I'm from the area where we used to watch. Uh, uh, what was it Kimbo Slice? Yeah, Kimbo Slice. Oh, and, dude, that's ages um, ago. Yeah, all the. Lyoto Mashida and uh-huh, all that uh-huh. stuff. So very stylized fighters. Mm. Not everyone having the same Muay Thai style. Mm. Everyone's got like different like karate bases, GSP, you know, the wrestling and karate style. So I really enjoyed all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah. I just want to clarify because like for the UFC, right, the weight cutting part aspect of it, it's quite straightforward to me where you weigh in 24 hours before the fight. So typically what fighters will do, right, if they are fighting at 170 pounds, they have to weigh in at 170 or at the very uh, most 171 pounds. Yeah. And 24 hours later, they have all that time to hydrate all the water yeah. and weight that they've yes, yes. cut before that. But for 1FC, how, how does it work right now? If, if you're familiar? Right now? Yeah. Okay. Back in the day, I was doing, like I said, 70.3 lightweight competition. Uh, I would roll around 78. Five uh, kilos of cut in. Eight kilograms. Eight point, eight point something kg okay. I'd cut. Uh, so, uh, then how long though? Um, so I'd, I'd be on like a fairly cal- calorie deficient diet for the last uh, couple of weeks. Mm. Eating salads and so on on uh, on the on the days before. So like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is important. The weekend, the weekend before the weigh-in. So Thursday was the weigh-in essentially. So the weekend before you got Saturday, Sunday, you're eating just protein and salads. So like salmon, poke bowl kind of things. Yeah. Uh, no sauce, having the most miserable time of your life. Uh-huh. Um, po- Poke balls ain't that bad. Yeah, yeah, I know. With no sauce or anything, uh, it's just a. Okay. And that that would be the only one thing you'd have all day, and maybe you'd have like an americano to go with that. Okay. Yeah. So you'd have one meal on the day. Oh shit. Sure. Uh, you might have already done training in the morning, like light light training or cardio. Uh-huh. I'd go cycling, for example. I do like sixty kilometers or something, or uh-huh. ride up. Book it, Fraser. That was crazy when I did that. Uh-huh. Anyway, oh, so shit. do that. Then you're just staying in your diet. You're water loading loads of uh, 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 RO water, so there's there's nothing in it. Uh-huh. Um, what what is RO water? Distilled, distilled, distilled water. Reverse you... osmosis. Oh, okay. So there's nothing in it. So it doesn't hold anything. It drags everything out of the body, and you load the body up with plenty of water. Um, so then you say you're 78 kg thereabouts. Uh, a lot of that is water weight mm. and you'll be having a lot of salty food yep. to create water retention yes and then you'll be having the reverse osmosis water reverse yeah. osmosis water is gonna kind of drag that salt out but at the same time yeah. the body gets used to having this amount of water yeah. so it keeps them making you go to the toilet so you're always going to the bloody toilet it's very annoying yeah so you're, you're doing that uh-huh. and you're doing that for the last 
I don't know, weekend until Thursday morning. So you keep doing that and then... You, the fight's on the weekend, right? The, the fight would be on Friday night, let's okay. say. So Thursday morning, you'd have a weigh-in. And then you're able to start rehydrating after that. So I'm trying to remember, because it's been a couple of days since my last weight cut fight, with the last one being uh, Adrian oh. Pung. So yeah, that yeah. one. So, um, yeah, so you, you'd be really focusing on your diet. You'd be heavy, mm. but it'd all be water weight. You'd probably be about 76 kilograms. Oh. You're super lean, 4% body fat already. Would you guys have uh, 24 hours to hydrate back? Uh, over 24 hours. More than that. More than that, because yeah. you've got uh, you've got the the half a day. You got about a day yeah. and a half. Let's say let's say if you are um, you were you cut the you were fighting at 70. Is it 70? Pretty. Yeah. So if you were fighting at 70, how much do you think you weighed during the fight? Um. Okay. So let let's roll back real mm. quick. So about 78, plenty of water weight on the go. Mm. Uh, I do probably photo shoots on Wednesday around midday, and from that point onwards. Uh, I'd stop taking any water in. I just would just stop taking water. So I went from 78 kg down to about 76 after a couple of hours. And then I'd go see my friend uh, Samir. We'd do a sauna, uh. maybe jump in the sauna, lose another four kilograms. So then you're about, what was it four, six? My math is terrible. About <laughs> seven, 70. Anyway, you'd end up about 73, 74 kg. Uh. So you still got about three or four kilograms to cut. And then you'd be, I don't know, I'd drive, drive around, go around to my friend's bathtub. Uh, I did the worst weight cut I had was uh, we were pouring kettles yeah, yeah. of boiled water into the bathtub with Epsom salts in it, which opens up the pores oh, yeah, and yeah, draws out that. even more, um, more fluid from the body. Have your head lying back on an ice pack. So then you get down to about, you keep getting out of the bath. You couldn't walk up. at this point, yeah. uh, so you just uh, you, you send, stand on the scales. You see about seventy-two kg, so you got about one point um, one point seven kg left to do. You you do the bathtub one more time. You get out. You go lie in a bed, wrap yourself up, and you'd get out the last like one more kilogram. But you'd try and sleep. You wouldn't try and sleep. You'd just be sleeping because you were so tired. Yeah. And you'd wake up thinking you were drowning in the bathtub still. Some mental fuckery going on there. It's yeah. pretty bad. And it's then, uh, and then I drive home um, through the uh, roadblocks for people coming home drinking on uh, on uh, yeah. like uh, Thursday nights. And then um, get home, stay in air conditioning, wake up in the morning at about seventy point uh, five, seventy point uh, six, so about three hundred grams over. I jump in the car to go to the eleven a.m. weigh-ins with only a little bit of sleep. Uh, I'd be happy that I've done the hard work already, but yeah. I haven't drunk anything now for like well over 24 hours. Uh, I'd have strawberry chewing gum. I'd take the gum, I'd chew it, and then I'd just pretty much open the car door on the way to the weigh-ins and spit saliva. So I'd do maybe 200 grams of spit. <laughs> I shit you not. And then um, we get there, I'd probably be like 70.4, 100 grams, and then... You know, there's a few minutes left until the official like uh, weigh-ins in the mornings. So all the press and media are there, and I'm like, I'd like to go to the toilet now. All I've got is 100 grams more to do. If I don't get that 100 grams done yeah. on, on the scales, I've got to go and get into the sauna just for a little bit, or go jogging, and you've got no energy left, you're knackered. So, yeah, so 11 a.m., I'm there. I go to the, 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 the toilet, and I manage to squirt out a little bit of pee. Should have probably, you know shot my load or something yeah. it's probably been enough um, but uh, yeah high you protein you wouldn't have diet. energy to do that no I know you'd have to get someone to help you out anyway you wouldn't um, to you know you'd just be like yeah just uh, get it done so uh, yeah help me get rid of fluids fluids are the, the key enemy so I think it's actually a good idea um, to, to do that anyway yeah so weigh in uh, so I've been without fluids for uh, like over 24 hours already yeah. so once you've weighed in I weigh in at 70.3. You're talking about what I am at fight night. Um, let's go through the rehydration process. Last thing that came out of the body is uh, water. First thing you want to put back in the body is water. Uh, so you have to have uh, like electrolytes, uh, rehydration salts, things that are going to keep the water in the body. Then you drink water, slowly sip on it. You have it too fast, you're going to blow up your uh, all of your like yeah. liver, kidneys, they're all going to suffer yeah. immensely. So after you had some water, you want to eat. You can't eat because there's not any water in the body to help it all process and digest. So how did you feel at that time? Like you're that? just completely effed. 
So there will be the same thing like Aglan and Gianni, uh, Iman, <coughs> all, all of the Malaysian. Everyone's got the same sort of thing. But I mean, I do think I cut quite a bit. So like eight. 8 kg plus that's, that's a lot dude. Um, that's my a lot. lowest ever weight was uh, 69.6 69. Yeah. when I overcut that was the first and I was hallucinating at that point couldn't see there's no water left in the eyeballs I was like so anyway that's the lowest weight I've been in my adult life um, but yes oh. so rehydrate slowly over the next like hour or so then go get some food uh, get some nutrients back on, get some uh, heavy carbohydrates in there. Uh, I always like to have uh, bags of crisps, and I was, I was told off by uh, by the Brazilian fighter. The, what was the name? The, the, oh, shit. Uh, it's like... Um, Malaysia. What, and, uh, a Brazilian fighter, one championship. He's like, no, bro, you can't do this. This is so... I don't know what kind of accent that is. Yeah, what's anyway. wrong with chips? Okay, well, I, I was eating the crisps. He said, how are you going to do that? You've just cut all the weight. Da, da, this is really bad for you. Blah, blah, blah. A lot of these people know mm. uh, how, how to, to eat and uh, uh. scientifically put back on uh, yeah, yeah. All, all the weights. So anyway, fight night, straight to the point. I'd be rolling probably 77, 78-ish again. So I'd be back up another eight kilograms. So from, basically, you're back to where you yeah, were Yeah, back before. to where I was. But so how do you feel? Shit. Shit, but you definitely feel way better than you did at oh, yeah. 70. Because if you're at 70, you're dead. You're literally, a fly could land on you yeah. and uh, then you'd fall over. It's not good. It's horrible. But the thing, you get used to it. And you get I, used to I got, I got, mentally, if you can do a weight cut uh, and cut those eight kilograms. You can do a marathon. You can do any bloody thing. Yeah, any. Anything. It's, it's a mental battle when you're at your physical weakest your mind is uh, potentially at its weakest as well and if you can pull through then yeah i i mean i've i've coached people and they're like, oh no i can't do it just get the fuck back in there stay in there you got to stay in there you're like spreading abalone on the on the body so it's, what it's, does uh, the abalone do it, it's not abalone abalone is abalone it's a branded thing it's a name name brand so it's a cream oh. opens up the pores allows you to sweat more so you can uh, watch oh, the dude. sweat dripping onto the floor, like drip by drip, and you got to do another two hundred drips before you get out. And it's like I don't know what temperature this it is, is on fire. Did, did none of the other guys talk about this? I don't think anyone no, cuts like I cut. They don't. Um, they're, they're a bunch of really good fighters. Anyway, they're a bunch of pussies. You mean? No, I didn't say that. You said <laughs> he, he said that. He said I didn't say that. But um, <laughs> Peter Davis calling out all the pussies. No, <laughs> no I'm joking. But um, it, it's basically. Um, uh, that was a decision between myself and uh, my friend Samir me, from Monarchy to, yeah. okay, you should, no, bro, you should, you should, you should do seventy kilograms because the guys in America and USC are doing this and they got the weight advantage, is, got height advantage. Which what is, is true? What was the next uh, closest weight class? The higher, the next weight class above. Uh, welterweight. Which was? Um, I, I can't remember. I see, I'm terrible. Uh, <laughs> This is why when you get me to MC the events and oh I should uh, learn information that's not relevant to it's me. All good, dude. See, I'm terrible. I just need a white guy. If, if it's relevant to me, <laughs> no, it'd be better if you got more information. But yeah, like, I was doing MCing for one championship last time when they came to oh. Malaysia. I had food poisoning. It was my birthday. I had food poisoning, and I just couldn't get my mind together. It's, it's terrible. Always unlucky. But what are you gonna do? Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know, if you talk to people who don't train or just the average person, right? When you tell them... When are you going to fight next? Fuck you. Do you know how hard it is? Anyway, carry on. No, no, no. I'm, <laughs> no, 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 no not, not that. I mean, when you explain to them, like let's say if I briefly tell my buddy, uh, oh yeah, you know, Khabib is fighting and he cuts 30 pounds, you know, and they have to cut 30 pounds within two weeks mm. to weigh in and then they'll rehydrate all yeah. it all the next day. They're, they're doing it within 24 hours. They're not, they're not doing yeah. it within two weeks. They're, two they're, weeks, 40 pounds. They're, they're yeah. watching their diet um, in order to be able to cut weight in yes. 24 hours. So, so when, when you tell a regular person that who doesn't train, right, they're going to look at you and they're like, oh, okay. Because they can't process it. It doesn't make any it sense. It doesn't make any sense. Can't process it. Uh, and it really doesn't make sense. A lot of the people I know, they're like, oh, I wish I could lose eight kilograms in, in 12 hours. It's like, I don't think you're actually mentally prepared for that. Um, to be mentally prepared for that, you've got to have something to work towards. If you want to lose, I want to lose 10 kilograms and, you know, I, I want to do it by next month. What what's your goal? Why are you cutting weight? 10, 10 kilograms. Uh, in I mean, one that month? seems like a lot, right? It's not compared to what. And I it's know. Nothing compared. Uh, to I mean, I could if like I did a photo shoot the other day for 
uh, the Sun and Seed yeah. project, which is yeah. a charity project. So it's the sh- topless. Yeah, so I just knew, because I got this stupid arm thing, which I'll speak yeah. about later if you want. But um, Sure. Yeah, so I'm not able to exercise, couldn't do anything really. Yeah. I couldn't cycle my bike for the last yeah. like two months. So all I could do, I'm not going to look very ripped, but yeah. uh, I just focus on my diet. Yeah. Uh, even the last day in, in Malaysia, I, I wanted some nice Malaysian food. Couldn't have any because I was too busy. You'll be back. Um, yeah, no, exactly. But uh, too busy on that day, um, yeah. uh, cutting weight essentially. Yeah. Um, I, I, I drank quite a bit of water, but I wasn't eating salty mm-hmm. foods in order to just look better in front of the camera. So, I mean, I just know how to do it. How much How much weight did you have to cut for that shoot? Um, no, I mean, I just uh, I just didn't put any water weight on and, it, uh, and I just kept the body fat reasonably low mm. through diet as opposed to exercising. Because I couldn't really do much. I could do jogging, but I just got busy, so I couldn't really so much. So. Okay. Because like- every time you stepped on the ground, my hand would hurt because I had four metal rods going through my wrist. So yeah, it was uh, not nice. Uh, th- that injury happened because of... Uh, Stupidity, cycling. yeah. So, <laughs> cycling. cycling? Cycling, yes. So okay, uh, well. yes, I've had a lot of injuries from well, cycling. You, you, If you had that during uh, uh, your one championship days, you wouldn't be able to fight no. at all? No, uh, I'd have a year out. Uh, okay, let me let me ask you, did, you, did it ever cross your mind the... You know what? If I could go back in time and do it, right? I... I would just fight at a weight class above. Um, this Did you ever think about that? Those guys are enormous. They are. Um, no, enormous. no. I'd I'd still be cutting. I'd still cut. Okay. You've I'd just uh, about use. It yeah. I'd use all of the. I I like that height advantage. That range advantage. It's suitable to my style of fighting. Um, and it meant that if if I got lucky, some people that were fighting in their natural sort of weight. I'd, 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 I get to fight them barely any, with a right? cut. You know, barely any, but, you know, occasionally they do come up. So, yeah. And people will be cutting, like, maybe five kilograms. I cut, like, eight kg. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, it doesn't seem like much, but, uh, yeah, it is harder for me, but it just gave me that smart advantage. So, so, so like what it. about the... Uh, okay. Optimization. So, so an, another thing, like, what, what the weight cutting does, right? Not only are you at your weakest and most fragile 24 hours before the fight... Yeah. What happens is if you're cutting that amount of, like draining yourself of all that water, what people talk about nowadays is how it, it makes you more likely to even get knocked out. Yeah, because um, it does, which is, I make, that's why I force myself to eat, force myself to rehydrate, because you're like, oh, you must be so hungry. You can't eat at that point. It's like people that have been on starvation stuff in prison, um, you know, they, they can't eat you, you, you can't eat because you've been the body's so used to you not eating which is why you, so you, you feel like puking if you eat or? yeah you can't you can't do you eat too fast and you can't digest it anyway and then you get stuck so I used to have to force uh, people that I was like looking after you've got to eat you've got to drink this now eat drink I don't want to do it I don't care if you don't want to do it you just cut the weight you didn't want to do that either but you did it you're going to do this eat yeah. drink rehydrate you've got to do that it's part and pass, pass of the process I mean, you've worked so hard to cut all the weight. Yeah. Just now work a little bit to put weight back on. So this is, is this, is a lot of fighters say this, like the real fight is, is the weight cut. Correct. Would you say that's true compared to your training camp? Um, Because training camp, that's what you do all year round. You don't cut weight all year yeah, round. Yeah, training camp is like all year round. You're learning techniques and stuff. Yeah. We don't really train for the weight cuts. The The last yeah. training for the weight cut is the weight cut before. Yeah. Would you say <laughs> that's the the worst part of it's, any it's training camp? definitely the worst part. And... Uh, uh, or going to Thailand and getting beaten by all the all the Thai guys because uh, they're they're great. They yeah. just beat the crap out of you. It's like they're like, oh, one FC fighter, no yeah. cardio because I'm busy oh, working and yeah. and doing all the hosting and stuff that I was doing. So I go to Thailand. And this and then training camp starts yeah. right. Uh-huh. How how are you a one FC fighter? So I KFC fighter, I KFC, <laughs> really. And then so they 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 know I can take the piss out of myself and they're yeah. okay. And I after two weeks there, I'm yeah. getting back yeah, up yeah. to spec. But Th- Those dudes, they don't take breaks. Like That's kind no. of like their lifestyle. You it, know? It's their lifestyle. That's yeah. their job. Yeah. But for me, yeah. like I, I was I was like hosting other shit to do. Malaysian Invasion and things yeah, yeah. like that. Yeah. And then I was fighting. So, yeah, I've... Okay, jack of all trades again. It, and that, you, you sound like you haven't recovered from the week cut. I've, no? <laughs> yeah, no, no. No, I haven't, I haven't recovered right now from uh, the weekend. Uh, yeah. They're not, not going out partying hard. That was last night. Uh-huh. But uh, no, the weekend is just what happened on the weekend? talking commentary. So, 
Um, wait, 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 wait! You did a commentary this week, uh, last week. Yes, weekend? it's not fighting, not not fi- no. no, no, not not mixed martial arts. Uh, oh. uh, okay, motorsport, no. drifting, something oh, else. Okay, I'm okay. heavily um, enthusiastic oh, about. Oh, okay. I saw, I saw on your stories. So yeah, and no, I so uh, it was the National Drift Series round number three uh, mm. on Saturday, and also that was Drift Kings, which is a European drifting uh, association. Mm. Um, they had Drift Kings 1 on Saturday and Drift Kings 2 it's hosted here right? uh, it's hosted in Malacca MIMC uh-huh. uh, International Motorsport Circuit and um, yeah so I was there doing commentary uh-huh. but I was just commentating by myself I had no co-commentators so I was there oh, like it was hard work it was hard yeah. work but it was fun there's a lot yeah. of smoke and um, a yeah, lot of the lots things of drifting. You, a lot of the things that you're doing is fun, man. It, well, I apart from the weight cut, it's all fun. It's just all a bit expensive, or, or costs you something. The weight cuts, yeah, that costs you, um, you know, your sanity. Yes, um, the the fights, it costs you any fun you were gonna have. So it's the thing is, you wanna you wanna win these fights. People are like, oh, come out, drink, you know, and or like, what was I? I was like in my twenties, early thirties at that time, and you're supposed to be going out partying hard, and I was like, oh, I can't. But luckily, during my earlier model years, I did have a lot of fun already. So uh, okay, you couldn't, uh, can't do that as you get older. Uh, it's harder. Sorry, what? You, you can't, can't do that. Um, can can you can't not fuck around as much before can you a not? fight? Well, before a fight, no, yes, uh, before a fight. But yeah, maybe maybe I'm a bit retired now, so I could just enjoy myself. But you, no, what what I mean is, yeah. you, you can't. Go, oh, there's some new burgers when I was eating meat and stuff. It's like, oh, the new burger joint in town, let's go get some food. No, you can't do that. Mm. Oh, it's like, oh, we, there's a new new place opening. Uh, it's really happening. Let's go out. And your friends are going out and partying. Mm. It's like, nope, sorry. So my social life uh, versus, you know, training camp, yeah. uh, it is either or. Well, so, yeah, so I, I chose to focus on that career and uh, it was good I had like five fights in a year that was the pinnacle what yeah that, that was the pinnacle well, was it like during one, one, one championship one, one five championship, in a year yeah five five in a year uh, I That's had a loss so time, two weeks later it's like okay you can do it again and because you, you just had the last training camp it's actually good you don't have to do another whole training camp you just top up and okay. just, but you then you can't go out and post fight go crazy you wanna, and eat re- food you want to recover gotta, yeah you got to recover people always say this you're either a fighter or a martial artist. Okay. What do you consider yourself? I'm a fighter and I need to be a fighter, but uh, I, I'm clearly a martial artist. But uh, yeah, so, uh, if I you mean? want to fight me now, I'll fight you. I don't know. I, I'll probably lose, but it doesn't matter. What, what, I, mean, what I mean is um, a fighter is someone who, who can just push through. Okay, like, like for example, that fight that you were lost in, you kind of fucked by the first minute. Yeah, you know? I was already fucked, but you got to push through. Okay, yeah. so I'd, I'd be a fighter. I do that with all my competitions. I still, uh, I still feel that I'm an athlete, and sometimes when uh, if I do cycling, yeah. you got these long uphill things. It yeah. does run through my mind. I have to psycho myself. I'm like, you were a national athlete, essentially. I mean, I know it wasn't for you know Malaysia. The same shit, do even tougher, tougher shit. Yeah, maybe, but you know, it's not recognized officially. But I, I, I use that to psycho myself and push on. People don't realize, but I, I strongly believe that. MMA athletes are the toughest ones. Yes and Mentally. no. Yes and no. I, I've, I've got to say, like, at, at the beginning, if, if people are really making a career out of it, mm. like, you see the, the, the veterans now. You see, like, Agalan and, and, yeah. and Keanu now. Yeah, uh, th- th- yeah those guys. Those yeah. guys are hardcore. Keanu, to come back from, like, the injury with his leg. So, and then to come back... What what, what we class is Keanu fighting? I, I'm not sure. Keanu, is it? Yeah, Keanu Super. I, 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 sorry, it's weight, weight class okay. below me. Um, oh, it's a smaller, smaller which dude. Is, uh, no, he does lightweight. He does lightweight as well because th- now the lines are really blurred because of the the, the hydration level uh, stuff. So it's, it's it's a bit tricky. So we'd be in the same category, I guess. For someone to end up being a fighter, right, or even think about it, right. So there's a reason why most of the champions, right, now, like world champions, they come then they don't come from a very privileged or rich family background with generational wealth. It's no such thing, you know. There's probably there's only one champion ever that has, I mean, in UFC that right. has come from a privileged background. BJ Penn. I'm not sure if you know him. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, but other than that, you straight up from the slums, the hoods. They you know, like to work hard. Yeah, Olivier. Very work. Olivier. Yeah, example, Oliveira. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, from the favelas yeah, in yeah, Brazil. Exactly. What? So I I want to ask about like what's your upbringing and where um like how did you come about fighting? quite generally middle class I guess Uh, yeah yeah, no real hardships I don't know how I got the mental capacity to fight 
um, just uh, kind of got stuck with it. I think I owed it to uh, the people I was teaching. Uh, so, because because I, I teach martial yeah. arts as well. Okay, so I started late, twenty years old. I was doing BMXing and, and mountain biking. Um, terrible fitness. Never liked running. Still, still don't. But I, I can run now. Uh, now I'm an old man. Um, but uh, yeah, so I got a Malaysian kung fu master in England. Uh-huh. Um, started to learn from him. Got very into it. What, what was year a, was this? Did like a few few decades back. Twenty years ago. Yeah, twenty years ago. Okay, yeah, okay. A couple, well, yeah, okay, a couple of decades ago. Uh-huh. Um, and I, I was very enthusiastic about it. I kept on like trying to uh-huh. do all these moves and emulate. Even at work, I get told off for like punching stuff. Yeah, the honeymoon uh, period. Yes, honeymoon yeah, period. Well. Yes, of course. <laughs> so um, and then um, yeah. So he went away. So I was by then because I was consistent. So consistency really does make a difference. Because I was consistent, I ended up teaching the classes. Mm. So a group of us that were teaching the classes wanted to know if what we had learnt uh, actually worked. Because now we were teaching. So we went and competed in England. And uh, we in were the doing MMA, MMA fight. fights. Yeah, back then we were like uh, at the Circus Tavern, which mm. is a, a strip joint uh, doing mm. fights. On, and it was great fun. And, you know, and it's a, <coughs> in England people love to fight. Mm. And you know the, the whole we had a lot of French people go over because MMA was banned in France at the time. I don't know if it still is. It's interesting that you say <laughs> that you wanted to prove to your students that you know this shit actually works in well, a real fight. Actually, not that way around. I wanted to prove to myself oh. that what I was teaching to the students worked, so I could confidently teach it and say, yeah. "Yes, it does work." Yeah, this is what I which is why you know jujitsu yeah. guys they're they're teaching and they're competing. Yeah. You know, that's the same sort of sort of thing. I owed it to the yeah. students. So Very they're, they're they're coming to, to learn, learn from, from you, you and or, pay you. Or if they're if they're paying you money as well. Yeah. Um they they deserve to not go to a McDojo. And it's yeah. And it was during that time, um, early two thousands when um UFC was just in the upcoming not they they weren't even big. I was at watching that time. Pride FC then. So yeah. it was amazing when one championship uh, yeah. crossed over with Pride. Yeah. But by that time I was kind of I was you know, getting out of the game essentially. Um, it's uh, I mean I I I probably wasn't, but uh, it's just uh, too busy doing other things to uh, pay too much attention to it. So you you took your first fight. Um, was that the one in two thousand four? Because I I can check your record. Uh yeah, like a uh, uh, massa yeah, yeah. dosaku uh, yeah. yeah Japanese game, game. And which fight was your first one championship fight? Uh, I can't even remember. It's like I've had eleven matches. Who was I? Uh, the guy from Singapore, uh, Juggernaut Fight Club, good, Singaporean guy. Yeah, um, yeah, no, that that was that was a good match. I yeah. I I got I maybe let's say. Oh no, my first fight with uh, one, one championship was Indonesia against a uh, Indonesian wrestler, uh-huh. and he did very well. I jiu jitsu choked him. Uh, not the regular side triangle. I I did the reverse side yeah. triangle and, and to to many like let's say <laughs> to many, he's making me have a dig around in my brain. Yeah, here. yeah. It's a, lot, a lot of stuff going on. Uh, I think Wiki is a more trustable source, yes, right? Definitely. I'm, don't <laughs> ask me. I don't, I don't I don't know what's going on. Okay, yeah. So I no I'm look, I want to ask like because to a lot of young people who are training martial arts right now MMA right specifically yeah. their goal if they are in Malaysia their goal is to get into one championship I've got to say I was lucky I was right time right place uh, inaugural show I was supposed to be fighting in or, or competing as an athlete in the first show for one championship um, but uh, unfortunately uh, or more likely fortunately uh, Gregor Gracie was my opponent uh, and name dropping. Moy Moy Fit. We accidentally leaked uh, the fact that I was going to be having a contest with him, and um, yeah. So then that got cancelled because Gregor Gracie is huge, yeah. and I had like two weeks with no team to get ready, uh, get fucked, and I was just like busy modelling and, and mm. doing movies and stuff. I would have got completely messed up. So. Uh, I'm I'm glad things panned out the way that they did, and uh, you've always got to look at the silver linings. Sure. So yeah, getting to one, yeah. for me, I was lucky to be in the right place, right time. James Goida uh, suggested James used to be in the same class in England. James Goida uh, writes for one championship, or uh-huh. at least did. 
Uh, he still does uh, articles mm. right now. Sure. But he suggested to um, Victor Quay that uh, I should uh, be picked up by one mm. and uh, I should do fighting because I had a championship belt from England and the, the inaugural show was called Champions mm. versus Champions. Yeah. So I already had a belt, so it made sense. Although, yeah, luckily it didn't go through. Yeah, um, dude, if you compare one back then to the type of because uh, it's brand new yeah, yeah to the publicity that it has right now yes. I was looking I was just looking now at they're the, a machine dude that that um, Shannon fight yes. it had 600,000 views oh, really and well, that's that's uh, that, that's thing getting paid on YouTube yeah where's my car bro <laughs> no but the thing is I, I thought that that was huge numbers for one the One Championship channel. Until? Yeah, when I, mean, I look at the other fights, not not the other fights, just the other videos, 10 million, 30 million. That's where the revenue comes from. I was YouTube. surprised. Um, yeah. I, I still doubt that that revenue is enough to, to fund the company. Yeah. I mean, Chatri is a really, really what rich would, dude. Yeah, he's a rich dude, maybe, but the, the company is costing money right now. Of course. Of course. It's uh, not currently profitable. However, it does make money. But again, what he's doing is he's spending money to make the money later on. Yeah. And it's going to come back yeah. um, because they're doing such a good job of uh, promoting. And they're putting on good matches people want to see. Uh, they're also, you know, getting people from around... Mighty Mouse, Demetrius, Demetrius yeah, yeah, Johnson, exactly, Mighty Exactly, exactly. Um, so, yeah, getting people from around the world uh, to uh, even vote for their hometown heroes. Yeah. So that's, that's the the angle they worked with me as well yeah. so you know so I, you, I'm half Malaysian but fighting for Malaysia in Malaysia so you, you've met Chatri many times then. Uh, yeah quite a few times yeah do you know um, you have any idea I, I can't remember how he um, he made his fortune before investing into in see one again I I, 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 okay. I I don't even know <laughs> I don't even know stocks and shares definitely before crypto uh, um, pro yeah probably one of those uh. yeah may, maybe I don't know he's he's uh He's very driven. Chatter is ultra driven. Yeah. Uh, I like his work eth ethic. It's a uh -huh. it's a bit hardcore if you're if you're working for him, uh -huh. of course, because he has, you know, he has expectations. Uh -huh. um, just like uh, you know when when, just like when Dana would have. Dana. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, you know, you see Dana doing so well, being a complete yeah. dick most of the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. But at the same time, he has people he needs to pay, and he gets them paid. And the fighters. Yeah, I mean, the fighters are complaining about the money and this and that. It's like, yes. Yeah. And then the fact you get paid in America, you get 50% tax. Oh, but, um, you know, if, if if you're in it just for the money, then maybe you shouldn't it's be doing it. It's not for you. It. But at the same time, if you if you sign a bad contract, that, that is on you and Dana's got you then. So that's yeah. it. So it's a, you just need to be smarter going in and uh, know your value. But that, that that's life lessons. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. There's too much stuff going on. If people can lowball you and get away with it, they're going to lowball you. That's it. So, I mean, fair enough. And, uh, I mean, it's not a nice thing to do to people, but it's business. Yeah, definitely. What? UFC ring girls or the 1FC ring girls? Well, the 1FC ring girls have disappeared now. but they're, they're, they're they, my, they don't have them anymore? I, I don't think so, but they're my friends. So I, I, yeah, I, I saw I, you got a couple of pictures. I'll go, I'll go, I'll go chill out with, the, with like... Uh, are you know, you, any any of them uh, live in Malaysia? No, no, no they're, they're all Korea and uh, Singapore. Like, uh, yeah, okay, I okay. think uh, I think Singapore boyfriends, uh, you know, driving yeah. around in Lamborghinis. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I think they're they're doing all right. Some, they're, Be some of them, they're beautiful. They're, they're they're pretty hard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like them. But on uh, top of that, a lot of them have got good personality as well, which is which sure. Is fun, so. Yeah, I I did not. I did, you didn't think of the personality. No, no, no. I, the, the, the beautiful the, personality. Eyes are up I mean. here. Eyes are up here. <laughs> um, no, no. But they yeah. they're pretty cool. They're they're fun to hang out with as yeah, well. Been for to sure. a few after parties with them. Yes. Yeah, so. Oh, okay. Lovely. Yeah. yeah. Um, Actually, we even shot a series with one championship mm. for the ring girls. And, uh, you know, we'd take them around and I took, uh -huh. took them out drifting at blaster cars and oh, shit. Uh, we went we went ice skating. Uh, and Malaysia? We, in Malaysia? In, in Malaysia, uh, at Sunway. And my God, they, those, some of those girls are like really, they're really on it. They're not just like girly girls either. So they're, they're pretty cool, man. I yeah, gotta say, yeah. so. Sure, sure. They ain't them, uh, that type of princess, you know. They're not, not princess, yeah, yeah. no. They're okay. Not, not Yo, so just in general, like, you've been in Malaysia 10 years. Well, over 10 years. What, what did you know about Malaysia before coming here? 
that uh, my my grandparents lived in in Miri and and or, yeah. So my 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 mum is from Malaysia. So oh, okay, I, okay. So I'm I'm I am half Malaysian Chinese. I'm a Hakka, Hakka Yun. Oh wait, wait, so you, you, <laughs> what the fuck? Wait, wait, so it's so not in Wikipedia, but you shouldn't trust Wikipedia. Yeah, your dad is a full Brit. Uh, so my mum is from uh, KK, Kota Kinabalu. Yeah. Chinese. Ch- Chinese. Hakka Chinese. Uh, Hakka Chinese from Kota Kinabalu, KK. Uh, yeah. And my dad is from UK, Ulu uh. Klang. What? You- <laughs> get it? It didn't work. Oh, yeah, it's good, it's good. I got more dad jokes <laughs> for you, don't worry. Um, yeah, no, so like before the oh. Twin Towers were up, I was over here. So yeah, yeah. enjoying Patarling Street, buying Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> from dudes in Patarling Street and wondering why the 60 hertz version of Japan didn't work at the same speed yeah, yeah, on my yeah. PAL Super Nintendo. Yeah, But uh, it's okay. Sure, you bought a lot of uh, pirated DVDs as well. Oh my goodness. Uh, when I was over and uh, I don't support piracy. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, fuck that shit. <laughs> so when you came here to visit, I'm sure you you brought back like loads of DVDs over to the... To I mean, the I UK. don't know how big that suitcase was, but uh, mm. I was watching movies for, for years. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, over... So my 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 grandparents uh, lived down in Brunei, mm. and then uh, some of my aunties and uncles lived mm. in Miri. So we used to do that yeah, you sort come, of area quite you often. Come down here every year. At uh, least. Yes, pretty pretty much once a year for for family holiday. Okay. Uh, we used to live in Australia for a little bit as well. So which part of Australia? Uh, Brisbane. So Brisbane. Okay. I mean, I was, I was young. That was like eighties, back mm. end of the eighties, and okay. in the eighties, that was a cool cool time. You never played. Grand Theft Auto Vice City. That was literally how it felt like. I'm that old. Jesus, how 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 young are you? Vice City ain't that long ago, man. No, no, uh, Vice City. It's based in the 1980s. That's the thing. The game wasn't long ago. It was a long time ago. But it was, you know, it, 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 it was supposed to be. And now Vice City is the new version of the of, the, of GTA. Wait, wait, there's another Vice City game. It's back the, then? The, well, G- Vice City is, you know, the first from the series. Is it okay? You got like. Top down Grand Theft Auto One, which is crazy. Grand Theft Auto Two is a bit. I mean, I played that into the wee hours a few nights. Grand Theft Auto Three was the first three dimensional one, yeah, I yeah, think, yeah, yeah. and that was PlayStation like Two. Yeah. My goodness, lost my life to that. That was awesome. Final Fantasy. Um, did you play that shit? I don't like taking turns. I'm like, get this like menu out of the way. My friends are playing it. Yeah, it's no, so it's, 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 it's fun, but it's turn based. I liked Chronos Trigger because you could just go and beat the crap out of people. You didn't have to turn base as much. Zelda, yes, we're just beating things. You don't have to like, and now I'd like to take a turn to beat. That's why I didn't get into Pokemon. Because you're going to like turn base and there's so and so does this, but I. I think I um I I grew up with Pokemon, so that's why naturally I could I, I felt accustomed to uh, turn-based. <laughs> turn-based, yeah, yes, yeah. exactly. Yes, and no, I I collect all those handhelds, so I've got like Game Boys and Game Boy Advances uh-huh, uh-huh. and DSs, and during the pandemic, yeah. I cut DSs in hard, half and made like a Game Boy Advanced DS thing. I don't know it's all sorts of stuff. So doing some electronic soldering stuff just for fun, and yes, you get Wait, a did you see a Game Boy? A DS Lite, but yeah. you, you remove the top screen, and uh-huh. then it turn, and you, you still it, you still got the Game Boy Advance slot at the bottom, and it's got this Game Boy Advance hardware on the board, so you can just have and a you single put the screen, screen on the DS on top. Uh, no, you just have it all running on the on the lower screen. Game Boy Advance. Screen. Yeah, Game Game Boy, but you yeah. use the DS Lite screen at the yeah, bottom got, because it's backlit. You've got a very geeky side of you as well. Yes, uh, exactly. Well, thank you. I think that's a compliment. It is. Uh, yeah. yeah it no. Is. But I, I mean, I can build my own PCs. Yeah, you can I used fight to. As well. Yeah, I mean, like I said, jack of all trades. I can, I can fix your car for you. I'm not going to unless you pay me. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah. you know, I drift. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I realized how slow I am at did you play, track played, racing. Did you ever play Daytona? Day, yeah, of course I played that. Yeah. Who didn't play Daytona? Me, People that are not as old as people who are not cool. <laughs> okay, I, I played Daytona. I played with Joey as well. Right, right, right. So. In Daytona, right? This is gonna sound like a total fucking noob question. Okay. You go from the fourth gear to the first gear, or the third gear to the first gear, and then you drift. Is that what happens when you drift in real life? I have no fucking clue. No. Okay. No. You got to remember Daytona. Although it's set in America, it's very Japanese. Sure. Because it's from Sega. Yes. Okay. So, drifting was a thing at that point in in Japan, like the nineties. Drifting didn't really move to America or any other parts of the world out of Japan until like, I, I don't know exactly, but... Is it because of the initial 2000s, D? Initial D, yes, yeah. it's all the same thing. So, 
basically what you're you're saying if you're going from fourth to first mm. your gearbox and your engine's probably going to fly out of the car it's bad but if you go like fourth to third uh. what you're doing you're increasing the uh the uh revolutions per minute of yeah, the sure. rear wheels and also if you're doing a fourth to third you might have the brakes lock up somewhere in between especially if you've got like a locked rear differential mm. so you do fourth it's spinning like this okay you shift it into third it'll lock up the rear end so actually yes you can drift by doing that okay I, I but you wouldn't do... go straight to one from four <laughs> no you you would you would no 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 never do that one gear down's okay where do you go to drift over here over here you got shalom stadium there's also malacca oh. uh m-i-m-c malacca international motorsport uh uh sure. circuit but i mean i've, I've never drifted there mm. shalom stadium elite highway uh, your local car park mm. at uh, Tesco, now Lotus <laughs> says. Um, there's uh, Palace of the Golden Horses that's reopening. It, it's drifting is about to explode in Malaysia again. Okay. Yeah, it's about to get cra- crazy. I, I'm not a car guy, so I... I, I right, I clearly fourth to first. Yeah, but yeah. No, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay. I, you know, don't worry. Come, come, out, yeah. come out drifting. Come to Blaster Cars and uh, you can get an experience of what real drifting is without paying huge amounts of money so for it's not your car that you're using right? no, I do, I'm, I've got my own drift car yes uh-huh. so actually oh, do people rent cars over there just for the experience similar to like go-karting is it yes well no Blaster Cars is a go-kart track at Sungai Wang yes. so my friend John runs that so uh, during MCO my drift car's just been sitting at home right uh-huh. rats have been having a party in the yeah, engine yeah. bay so anyway I, I, yeah exactly I let I let I let the them, them take the car and they've they've the, my my drift car was running this weekend at Shalom whilst I was doing commentary in Malacca. True. But yeah, go to Blaster Cars, get a taste of what real drifting is. Oh. And, uh, but you, you get to do it in go-karts. Yeah. What do you think about go-karting? Go-karting's fun. I like going Pussy? fast, but... Sorry? Pussy like? No, no, no. It's, it's, it's hard. Um, it's hard. Like I, I know my friends like uh, do go karting championships, uh-huh. and they're all about going super fast. And um, I'm not that good, unfortunately. I don't mind drifting; it's good. It's more about fun. But I start to lose interest mm. um, with um, with with racing because it's just repeating the same thing over again and over and okay, over again. You're not you 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 like the the drifting aspect, but you're not there to race. And I'm not really there to race. I mean, I would race, um, but Okay, back to what I was saying with the simulator, the sim, sim, simulators, right? I, I briefly touched on it. I did uh, something for Michelin, and they had Grand Theft Auto, uh, Grand Theft, Grand Turismo, <laughs> uh, Grand Turismo racing online. So you got people with their sim setups during MCO racing online. Those guys are so fast, and when you put them into the real world cars, okay, there's G Force. They're that good in real life as well. Like Leona Chin, she was there. And uh, she asked me to jump in on Gran Turismo with her friends. The guys were like two laps ahead of me on like a five minute course. I was like, how is this possible? And those guys can drive so well. And I realized then that I was slow AF. Yeah, you thought you were fast before. I thought I was all right. Yeah. I'm not even all right. I'm like, I'm rubbish. Yeah. (laughs) But uh, yeah, drifting is is different. Drifting is about fun. Uh, And... I think in recent times now I can be a lot more consistent with uh, my drifts. I've it's kind of like sunk in how to drift better, and I, I can't wait to get out in my drift car and actually you, do. You've done drifting. many. Uh, you you've done go karting many times. I've done go karting quite a few times, but yeah. blaster cars yeah. I've done loads of times. Well, blaster cars is drift go kart, drift go karts, go drift go karts. But what is the vehicle? It's a it's a cart. Four hundred ninety cc petrol Honda. Is the motors. build like a like a go kart? It is it's it's a go kart, but with uh, like Dodgems bumper car guards on the outside. You you're not supposed to love tap anyone, but you inherently will do. Yeah, uh, I I did go karting just just once recently. There's one at Kota Damansara. Kota Damansara, what's yeah. the okay name? Shit, I can't remember what it is. But uh, that's a funny name. Um, <laughs> it's but no, I do like another another go kart place which I really like is uh, X uh, Sunway, the X X, uh-huh. X X X Park. Yeah, Extreme Park. Extreme, Extreme Park. Park. Yeah. That go kart track is great. Those are grippy go karts, yeah. but you can drift at high speed. It's really fun. Uh, and I was there with uh, Alec, uh, Alex uh, Young, uh, Alex Young, yeah, yeah, doing doing the Sims, and then Alistair uh, was my his his son was uh, my teacher. So Alistair's a racer, 
and we both had uh, one lap in the the go kart section, and we were just drifting the hell out of everything. It was really really fun. So yeah, that was good. Sure, man. I so what I what I realized <laughs> from my, the first time I did go karting right is, first of all, it you sweat a lot. Yeah, you sweat a fuck ton because of just having to stay like laser focused. focused. Yeah, it's laser focused. And even my hands got tired. Yeah, after. your hands get tired. Yeah. Because also drifting, your hands get really, really tired until you learn to relax and go with the flow. But you only learn to relax after doing it. A whole bunch of hours. Yeah, hundreds yes. and hundreds and hundreds yes. of times. Um, like drifting now, I can do in the go-kart, the blaster car stuff. I can do single-handedly. And I've had to because of my arm. Before, absolutely knackered. Now I can just like. Doo, 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 doo. But what I about your 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 hand? Your I don't even need to use that. I can hold the GoPro now loosely with this hand and. Oh, do you're doing it with one hand. I can do. You can singing. drift with one hand. Yeah, quite easily now. Okay. <laughs> got got better already. Uh, yeah, 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 much much better. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So oh, yeah, but no, you want to no, learn? Come out. I was going to ask. So you were saying blaster cars compared. So what if I'm um, on a regular go kart? the car there's a lot more grip can, can i can you i can drift yeah i always try to drift but the grip levels are very high so you cannot you cannot maintain the drift throughout the whole corner easily uh, because the go part's not go it's not, it's not powerful enough if you had like one of these like two stroke go karts they're like insanely torquey then you could maintain the drift maybe at uh at uh what was it uh three 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 stone park uh, Elysio there they have go-karts outdoor uh, you can buy your own carts rent garage space there if you drift there and you get like um, a two-stroke go-kart it's a different style of motor uh, yeah you could drift that track that's pretty crazy one of my buddy he mentioned before that he's also into like street racing and shit like that mm. and he would say that when he was younger during his heydays he would drive up the uh, Gunting mm. sometimes they would come down at night and they would turn off they would turn off the headlights just for fun and I'm thinking like how is that's not fun that's like not fun for anyone driving on the same road as you no it's it's, it's not particularly good yeah. Um, I, I, yeah we, we did uh, we did some gunting driving in our you ever, you ever drive up like a uh, race up to <laughs> yeah 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 so I'm just trying to pop up a video here so you can see I don't know if it would probably be in reels now I don't what, know. what video is this of me driving legally on a closed circuit up gunting um so, but yeah, no, just... Wait, uh, how is there a legal... Huh? What? Oh, what? Yeah, th- these are questions you don't need to ask. <laughs> it's like, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a close... Oh, so here we go. Uh, so th- this is, this is, you know, this is driving up sideways, the not so sideways and, you know, you know... What so, about the, the regular cars? What, what, you just, you just... You just you bang not, them? Not, why would you bang? Because, you, you know, you can just drive past them just like you're in a regular car going up. Someone's slow, you just go past them, but you go past them sideways. You're just trying to counteract the car's bad tyres. I'd be uh, scared the shit if I saw... Come out, just come out, sit in the car. And oh, yeah, I'll, sitting in the car is scary <laughs> enough. <laughs> <laughs> scary enough, oh mate. Apparently but it's scarier I, than driving. Okay, look. I, I've, I've been in my own car driving like a crazy person before I've got yes. out of the car and mm. my legs are shaking. I'm like, oh, wow, that was uh, quite something. Yeah, yeah. So driving like and drifting is is, is fun. So you, you should about, definitely do it. What about sitting in your, would you? No, you, no, thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. No, thanks. No, 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 no. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> you, go, you go ahead. You do yeah. what you got to do. Yeah, yeah. I'll just watch the video. Yeah, you you rather um, be in control <laughs> of your death? As yes, yeah, exactly. Because you you, you've you got... It, the thing is, if you're on a roller coaster, it's on rails. You kind of count on the fact that the the hundred people that have been on the ride earlier that day, they're okay. I'll be okay. It's fine. If your friend is drifting on the road, yeah. he he's not on rails. She's not on rails. Yeah. So uh, it neither could are be, you when you're doing. It could be very <laughs> dangerous. But then you're in control yeah. to a degree, and everyone's like, "Oh, but the car's drifting. You're out of control." Oh, it's controlled, um, controlled uncontrollableness so it, I, I don't know how to explain it but another reason I did start doing drifting is because not that I just enjoy extreme sports but I did drifting so that I could go faster because you know what happens when the car kicks out you're not like oh sh- I'm gonna die you, you're like oh I'm just drifting okay let me just put this back into grip that's it you said you you started to learn drifting so it, I mean because it would help with your timing. Yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. On 
closed circuit. Closed legal. Legal. Yeah. Yes, tracks. Okay, like, yeah. Sepang. So Sepang. In, in these Sepang tracks, right, what's mm. the <laughs> good thing? What is the, yeah. the fastest you've gone? <laughs> I, I, speed wise, I, I don't, I don't, I don't this know. Gen- generally, we just, we're going uphill, but they have a lot of the uh, the supercar guys go down there and I can stay Super with them. Supercars on fucking Gunting? Yeah, yeah. The, but when they go down the hill, there's Is one, it at night? Like, no, when no. There's you, no just, you normally do like uh, Saturday morning, like or Sunday morning rather, like 7, 8 a.m. Did the police get in the way or? Like? No, they're, 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 if you don't cause problems, then. They don't cause problems? Sure, yeah, man. Don't cause problems. <laughs> uh, just be nice. And if you see traffic, just start to drive normally. Don't. I mean, you see, I see a lot of videos where people are driving very dangerously and I, I, I don't I agree with too. it because it's like oh, it's a, a bit hit and miss but drifting is inherently slower because you're not going at full grip speed so yeah drifting is if your car is set up for it is actually okay S- something that I think you would you would probably be familiar with Isle of Men no no Isle of Men so an Isle of Women maybe no 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 um, shit an this- island no, no, for no, men. No, no, fuck. I, I don't think it's With called... men? No, no, no. Not island, not island. I forgot what it's called, but it's basically these moto... P- people driving on motorbikes and they're going... Oh, oh, Isle of Man. The TT. Manix TT. Yeah. Yes, sorry, sorry, oh, sorry. Are you a fan of that shit? Uh, it's fucking insane. It's fucking um, insane, dude. I've got a full motorbike license. So I haven't really... Oh, you don't, full, you don't do... I, I, I've, I've got... I've got I can, I'm, I'm able to ride a super bike. You have a bike yourself? Uh, no, I used to have bikes in the UK... Oh. Uh, I I chose the path of supermoto instead mm. of superbike because what is the difference? Supermotos are up upright. It's like BMX, like a motocross sure. style, but you put road wheels on it so you can drift it. Okay, you can slide it yeah, around. Yeah, yeah. Superbikes, you are milliseconds away from death all the time. Uh, I love it, but watching the videos like of people doing this, the, yeah. the Isle of Man Manix yeah. TT yeah, you got the camera here and you've got the bike poof, 200 miles an hour yeah. 300 kilometers you're like what? I just oof. when they're cornering that's insane How, full full trust yeah when they're cornering they're I don't know a, a feet off a feet from the the ground yeah they're, they're, they're in the air sometimes because of, of the of the undulation of the road so it's like whoa, up in the air and land yeah. and you're putting a, a lot of trust in in the the gear you're using yeah. uh like with any motorsport really any cycling even and uh you're also putting a lot of trust in your understanding and ability to work with physics so since since we're on the topic of extreme sports right would you would you ever try a wingsuit <sighs> Fuck is that? fucking hell so, like, I, I i've got a i've got a fear of heights oh. but I've, I've also got a fear of public speaking but i do do that <laughs> so to say no would be to to possibly lie. You know what? You know what I was think um I was thinking about. Right? So, so there was this this um, I heard I heard I heard Joe Joe Rogan talking about this. He was talking about how um he had this guest on who has the records for uh most wingsuit something right, and he was saying that that dude was saying that when they were coming up with the prototypes of mm. wingsuits. A couple of people died. Not a couple. All of them are dead. They're long. They've been dead a long time ago. You know. So. so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for your service. Um, yeah. 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 I, it's the way it is, though. That people love to Adrenaline. push the limits, push the boundaries. These, you know, like the surfers will surf in the biggest wave, uh, yeah. and that will be their last wave. You know, it's, it's sad, yeah. but they are chasing the only high that they know. And it's, it's it's yeah, it's crazy. A high that they'll get from not many other places as it, well. It, indeed, there's things things like that. Manix TT. The people, a lot of people die every year. Doing of course, that. of course. Um, well, I I don't know the statistics, so I'm assuming a lot of people die. I know people die. Um, but um, yeah, it, it's so crazy. But then, and if you compare a sport like that to a sport like fighting, where probably not nearly as much people die. <laughs> exactly. Look, um, trees have caused me more injuries than I've had injuries from MMA. Uh, I've had more injuries from cycling than, than I've MMA. had. MMA. Yeah. Okay, that, I mean, tell got, me about that. I got two metal plates in here, yeah. but this, this is like the ref, well, Joey. Well, no, the, not, the, the metal plate from that, uh, during that fight. Yeah, Adrian Pung. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, I mean, I got knocked out. Yeah. I, I played some bad moves. I, I didn't really read the, the hand of cards I was dealt properly. Mm. 
And then I got knocked out and Joey, the ref, mm. it was a bit slow to... Yeah, I, I didn't watch that one, but I remember... Okay, um, don't, I, my, I, my, I got reminded about that last night because my friend was like, hey, uh, your, what your, 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 your fight that time, last time I came with my friends, we came to watch you, first time we came to watch you. That's and horrible, one second... Dude. That's you horrible. got knocked out. I was like, yeah, cheers. It was it was at least sixty seconds. All right, yeah. that was another fifty nine times, <laughs> fifty nine times more than that yeah. one. Come on, come yeah. on, bro. Uh, but yeah, no. It's like, yes, I got knocked out. Fuck out. So, uh, okay, a quick, a quick question: Does your parents ever show up? No, because they're in England. But okay. I used to fight in England as but well. Would they want to? Like, no, they don't watch the the things. My dad, it, it makes my dad worry a lot. So, you, you, I think it would make your mom worry. Yeah, well, more, yeah of course, my mom worried. But I'd be like, okay, you got competitions, but you know. Anyway, look, the, the fight stuff was a kind of a career move as well. So, yeah, it was. Uh, I think it was the right move, and it 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 made me uh, a household name at the time. Now, yeah. you know, especially since MCO, yeah. it's not to say I'm struggling, but I'm I'm, I'm trying to rebrand myself uh, i i guess or find find a place where people still want me to be yeah you found so it fit in drifting well yeah, yeah no, cars well, I, I don't know i i enjoy that but it's, i don't know if if they want me to be part of that that group or not so well like for example i, I used to be i used to be the number one male model in malaysia all right when I, was I, this I, I shit you not but does anyone invite me to any fashion stuff no because i got shit fashion sense probably the reason why yeah they got but, someone um, to dress you up though. yeah exactly i need someone to dress me up and yeah. you know i was literally like when like 2006 okay. uh th- like t- 2006 to 2016 uh-huh. pretty much until i started fighting uh-huh. i was like the, the number one okay. male model yeah, I, I don't know I don't, i've done so exactly well that, yeah. that, that was for me being me as opposed to a model but i've been in men's health as a model mm. so and i i, I work the circuit in southeast asia let me ask you this yes then. While you were you were sort of training the whole time while you're doing modeling, yeah. which would pay better, modeling or putting your life and health on the line, um, fighting another dude in a cage? Okay, the cage fight thing gives you a name, as in you're sure. called you you're called somebody. You're called Peter is fighting against uh, Joe Bloggs, right? People respect that. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. As a model, you're just some handsome looking fellow. But I've had so much damage over the years, so that. Not from it, modeling. Not not from modeling. No, I I I that that was that was some really good times. I like Russian girls. But yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah. Obviously, yeah. is the girls, right? Yeah. No, but it's, not it's, the photo shoot the, times. The, that the is. thing is, photo shoots are good, but the experiences you get from doing that because you're able to walk into places that you'd never be able to walk into if you even if you had the money to do it. So I've had so many exclusive experiences from that. It's just unbelievable. You, you have me. any? Um, you you've. I always like to ask this. You have any starstruck moments of meeting people like well, during I'd, your morning? I met or? Drift Sensei yesterday or on Saturday, Sunday. Who's Drift Sensei? Who, he's uh, from Hyperdrive on Netflix. Okay. He's uh, he's one of the, he's the Japanese guy driving the, the okay, car, okay. The, uh, the 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 Japanese yeah. drift car, the police. Yeah, he's big but, in the drift scene. Yeah, in, indeed. Uh-huh. Yes, and I, I met him. On, What's he doing in uh, a major? He, he was uh, competing the event? in the in the uh, oh. Drift Kings event. Yeah, so okay. I got to watch him drifting live. But uh-huh. yeah, starstruck moments. Um, I've I've met I I met David Beckham once. Like mm. uh, see, he gave me a bottle of Hay Club, which is signed. Anyone well, wants why to did, buy that for me? Did let you me know. Uh, <laughs> at at uh, Troika back back when Troika oh, yeah, was Troika. Yeah, so, I remember Troika. So yeah, no. So he was there, and I, I was very lucky to to receive a. Was it a an event bottle. or? Yeah, for Hay Club, his whiskey. Okay. So he he hand handed me a signed bottle. Oh, he know. was doing a promo over yeah, here, yeah, and you much. you were working the event. Uh, no, he handed me the bottle, so I was the guy with the. I got a bottle at home, like from. Thank you, David. So you you yeah. you, you just showed up there and you it's uh, like, nice and uh, here you go. Cheers, David. Nice to meet you. Oh, da, da, da. So yeah, sure. You, yeah. So the, you know that that's the kind of thing that uh, the modelling sort of stuff gets yeah, you. Yeah. So I think I was fighting at the time already. Then I was already fighting, but so mixing the two together is very mm. good. So I. Look, if you look back at my history, what I've done mm. in the last 15 years, mm. it's quite crazy. I haven't just done one thing. I've done so yeah. many things, so many things that I can't remember. But then, you know, the next hot thing in that particular event has turned up already. So um, I've been forgotten. So I've, I've just been moving around yeah. to what I enjoy. Luckily, I'm just still doing what I enjoy. Um, I don't know how I've done it, and I'm very thankful for it. Let me ask you this: Do you 
do you miss the process of getting ready for a fight, going for a fight? Or <laughs> no, not really. Yeah, it um, seems like it. Like oh it, my goodness, it's so stressful. I mean, I, I, the thing is, I, I'd do it again. I'd do it again. Uh, yeah, but the problem you're just is, that crazy. Yeah, okay, well, maybe. Uh, maybe, but I, you know, I enjoy competing. I, I like being an, an athlete. Mm. I like pushing myself to the limit, finding out what my limits are. Yeah. Because uh, you never really know. And I, I mean, I get to do that now with cycling, which is good. Um, that's the most athletic thing I do right now. Um, essentially and I want to get back to jiu-jitsu as well and I'm going to do more jiu-jitsu tournaments I'm going to wait for my hand yeah. to have uh, like I can move my hand there Dude, you, you got see. fucking huge hands I cannot way. move you see that that's that's probably quite permanent so I can't Yo, see. post see that the angle difference yeah 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 oh, I okay. need to I mean if I push it maybe don't push it but like forward right there this one no not so much but uh, yeah, if you talk about hands, dude, he's got huge dude. What the? Fuck? I haven't got huge hands. You just got small little girly. No hands. man, dude. I I I know what the the average is. Dude, okay. your hands are huge. <laughs> yeah. Put it in the camera, dude. So there you go. Yeah, they're, they're they're pretty big. So L L or XL size. Sure. And the the time I got knocked out, my face got caved in. I'm wearing L size gloves. The dude, Adrian Pung's wearing like XL. Mother father. What? Why? Because he's got bigger hands than me. <laughs> Yeah. But he's no, I I, I saw he's uh, I think he's from America. Is he's it? Australia. Australia. He's, yeah. Uh, he's an New, he's New Australian, Zealand, New Zealand. Yeah, or possibly. But um, yeah, I, yes, he's half Chinese as well. But he had a car accident and smashed up his whole face as well. He doesn't After care. Your fight? No, no. Before before the fight, and that's what makes him such a good fighter. He's got nothing to lose. He doesn't care. Yeah. For me. I'm just absent-minded because I'm absent-minded. Maybe that's why um, I don't care either. Let, let me, uh, okay, what was the 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 moment that you that you appreciate the most from fighting? Like it could be a knockout, it could be your, your victory. Um, yeah, you. Anytime you get a victory, it's like it's awesome. Okay, Tell me about that feeling. Well, I don't know. I, I, it's the same. I. I it's the same like anything. If you, if you succeed, it's just like, wow. It's great. It's amazing. But the the thing when you do the fights is you have the audience there yeah, yeah. really going for you. And that gives you an extra level of like, yeah. wow, this is amazing. Even if it's a, such a small thing in the history of the world. Yeah. It, it's like, wow, people actually appreciate this. People are appreciating what I'm doing. And then you're like, you feel like you're in the right place. You know? I... I, I I talked about this with uh, Colleen, right? And then I, let me know if you agree. But I do think that MMA is going to be the biggest sport in years to come. Only like only because... If it of, doesn't get banned, um, because it is a bit of a blood sport and it's quite brutal. And sometimes I don't think it's I'm gonna, still like... I, I wince when I see people getting mashed up. Because people are... It's literally, you're putting... I mean, you, you see, look, I, I still do it. I still enjoy it. I still yeah. enjoy watching. But... It, you are trying to get people killed out there, but then the referees have to step in and stop it. Yeah. But you, you, like the, the fight yesterday, you know, the people are just smashing the hell out of each other. Like, ooh, they're, 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 they're one half step from death. They are, they are. <laughs> All the time. But, but then again, the argument is going to be, you know, you compare to other uh, extreme sports. What was that? Uh, wingsuits. You know? Yeah, but no, everything's 100% or 0%. Fighting, yeah. it, it the percentages change during the fight. Yeah, <laughs> so you could you could come off the fight, you know, unscathed. Yes, you, you could. Uh, also, yeah, you, you you never really know. I've I had a couple of fights where I've come out and we're like, wow. So what was the feeling coming off? Well, is it better to to have to come out of a fight where you know you got really well tested? You know, I like the fights where you get tested. Yeah. I'm in it to see what I can do, find where mm. my limits are. Really, that that's that's what I'm about. So, I like that. Which was your favorite performance? I don't have a favorite. Oh, you don't? I just enjoy generally everything, really. But at the same time, don't enjoy the weight cuts. But um, yeah, no, that's the thing. It's like, uh, you, you're going to ask me questions like that. Who's your favorite fighter? I don't know. Mm. Who's, uh, you know, who's your favorite drifter? I don't know. What's your favorite car? Well, I kind of like these. It's mm. like, I, I, I'm very nonspecific. Sure. I, I'm always walking on the fence. I'm terrible. <laughs> Basically, it's not like uh, you were inspired by a certain someone. You, you just pick pick up hobbies and then you go with it. Things I enjoy and then yeah. I, I, I try and take that hobby as far as I can, yeah. You ever tried, uh, you ever tried streaming on Twitch? Twitch. Uh, uh, um, 
People do that, man. They, I they mean, make decent money. Yeah, but I don't know what I'd be streaming about. I, yeah. I don't... I mean, this is cool. You're here asking me questions. Uh, if you stream this, this is cool. But then if I'm just there talking to myself, it's like doing commentary. That I don't really know what I'm uh, go- uh, going on about. People why do that, are some, Why are people going to watch me? Why would you want to watch me do, doing nonsense? I, do, I don't know. I, I don't even have very pretty feet. They're not bad feet, but... I mean, I could do an OnlyFans feet account. Whoa, suddenly we're talking about that kind of thing, you know. So, I don't know, man. I I I could do Twitch. I don't know if I've got enough time for it. Um, I I almost it's it's not to say that I didn't have you in mind, but I Mm. I've been so busy Mm. um, that I almost forgot I had to do this. And after this is done, I've got to rush off and do some other stuff as well. What do you have one later? Uh, I've I've got like social media editing I've got to do. Okay, okay. uh, I've got one event to do later on tonight as well. So there's just so much stuff going on in my life. I don't have time to think about things and oh this one and that one whatever it's just just do okay. it. and even things like my drift car yeah i've i haven't even driven that thing for for, for years yeah you can't uh, wait to get I back to it i just don't have time to do things yeah, yeah which is why i let my friends take it and and drive it and repair it so yeah you're a busy man yeah well i don't even know why i'm that busy but i am gosh it needs to be but more but that's paid. a that's a much more fulfilling life than you know a life where you're not busy right it's true a yeah. life where you're not busy like in the mco yeah um, people feel depressed it, it's nice It's depre- but the thing is people get depressed because they're not getting any feedback from people saying oh you did a great job oh that was good and so on you, you're just there sitting around I mean I'm, I'm able to take that but at oh. the same time I got depressed because no one wanted me there was no work you know so it's, it's but, not to say but like, it's not that they didn't want you it's because they couldn't I, exactly but yeah. It doesn't matter. They're, the they're not. They're side. not. They're not able to tell me that they want me. Then mm-hmm. I don't feel loved, and then I get depressed. But no, it's the same sort of thing. It's uh, because it's a social interaction thing, yeah. essentially. Um, well, times have changed. So I mean, yeah, exactly. So I mean, yeah. again, with the fights, the audience, the people, yeah. the the reciprocation you get yeah. from the audience is yeah. quite it's amazing. A crazy it's, rush. It's something like because I do stage drama acting as well. I do movie acting. So yeah. you know, I did pantomime as well. Especially pantomime was it? After I got knocked the fuck out, I got. I did. I was Abenazi the Evil Wizard. You never seen that. Because I'm I'm literally Abenazi the evil wizard. You what don't know. That? I could turn you into. You don't know uh, <laughs> Aladdin. Aladdin. Oh, okay. Aladdin. Um, you know. So it was, it was good fun doing pantomime as well. I don't particularly enjoy doing stage drama mm. acting, mm. but the thing is, you learn new skills. And if you could yeah. do a stage drama, yeah. and you're waiting for the response of the audience. First of all, I'm breaking down my fear of sitting in front of people talking. One. Second, I'm understanding better how what I'm saying or, or putting across in my acting is understood by someone like yep. instantaneously. Yep. And then I have to react based on that, change things a bit and bounce them back in a rally, you know? So it's another layer to to acting. So, yeah, yeah. Um, it's very different than uh, being on set and filming a movie. Exactly. And then yeah. you, you, I do this and I do the fighting and I do drifting. It's just... I don't know what I do. It's like people, what do you do for work? I don't know. You so do a lot of things. I, I do yeah. do a lot of things and I don't think, see that the problem is, I wouldn't say it's a problem. I don't but, think it's a problem. And it's not a problem. Yeah. But the thing is, not everyone realizes that I can do as many things as I do because if you, you know me from martial arts, yeah. so you just think, oh, martial arts stuff. That's because I'm a fan. Okay, yeah. and, and, I, and I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. I think you mean martial arts fan as opposed to... Uh, uh, after I saw but your yeah. fights, yeah, I'm a fan yeah, okay, too, okay, right? Okay, okay, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> it is, yeah, it's cool, it's cool. Um, but um, then also things like uh, the stage and the acting p- yeah. thing people enjoy me from that sort of thing but they don't know I do oh you do MMA is it yeah. it's like, it's like oh, really yeah, you didn't know <laughs> you have to continually retell your story uh, which is why I'm very happy to be here because someone's going to listen to me well just you, you guys <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, a couple of other people maybe five yeah, six maybe people. five, five yeah, or six but yeah. then again <laughs> right okay the reason why you know people are always going to ask you like oh you're doing all, all this or that mm. or what, what do you do they, you, you're talking to people that are let's say they've been a banker for yeah. 20 years yeah. so obviously I, I was in finance okay you know what I, I did I forgot to ask about that what the fuck happened so you were 
I was working for a subsidiary of the Lehman Brothers. Okay, the yes, dates yes. don't quite really correlate too much, but yeah. the subsidiary I was working for, yes. uh, they were looking to get rid of people at that time. It's like 2006. Yeah, the economic crisis. Yeah, right? economic crisis. But 2008 is when it really, really hit the fan. But uh, 2006 is when the company I was working for uh, decided that they yeah, didn't, didn't, cutting, want me, didn't, 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 didn't want me around yes, yeah. as they're moving off. It, it, and then, yeah, because of that massive depression, yeah. a long-term girlfriend left me. Um, the, the job I'd worked hard to get, gone. I was staying in, uh, in a shared, shared house. Yeah. Uh, the, the landlord was taking that back. Yeah. So I didn't get to stay there. That whole chapter of my life just collapsed, which is why I came out to Asia. So okay, you're 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 someone that you know you came from. You've experienced both sides, which yeah. is the corporate full time gig, yes. and now you have. Now I'm just generally unemployed. Yes, I know. Yeah, Thank you, Ben, don't, don't, for reminding don't me. Don't say that, man. You do everything. I do everything. Yeah, yeah for so, no so, money, unemployed. Yes. Yeah, so. So, so yeah, what like what is the? Would you go back? Would you? Oh, I'd, I'd go back. I'd I'd happily go back and no, I'd be no, and I'd be your manager and I'd be your manager's manager and I'd be a CEO. I know how to handle shit now, but it's just um, I I I you know. But it's a different lifestyle, though. It's a different lifestyle. Yeah. It's stress. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, I I deal with incredibly high stress situations. Yeah, but would you prefer that? Like, would you go back to that, or would if, you rather if I, be if, I, if right I prefer now? that? If, if if I preferred that rather, I'd be doing it exactly. Uh, however. I I feel I feel I I could potentially CEO a company if if I had enough passion for that particular yeah. product or company I'd yeah. learn it inside out and uh, I'd happily sit down to meetings and get yeah. things deal deal signed because another thing I did TV hosting for Channel News Asia yeah, yeah, down yeah. Singapore and we we're working out like how to raise a super baby um, so what we is went, a super baby it's a it's, it's a baby that's super it's like uh, it's literally the title. <laughs> But um, no, um, yeah, yeah. so essentially uh, we, we went around Asia finding out how different Asian parents were raising their kids mm. uh, in order to make them cleverer or better, smarter, stronger than the next. Mm. And um, there are so many different ways uh, of w which they do that. And in China, what they do is they teach EQ, not IQ. So it's not about intelligence. The it's intelligence helps, of course. The CEO of a company needs to have a, a certain amount of IQ, sure enough. But what differentiates uh, CEO A from CEO B is CEO B has EQ. He's able to speak to his workers, yeah, yeah. empathize with them, yeah. get them on his side. And that EQ is what makes a difference and turns a baby into a super baby in China. <laughs> But um, again, <laughs> but what I'm saying is, yeah. I, I understand this information. All the things I've done have given me such a wealth of information uh. that I only know the top layer of, really. Um, I need to learn more in depth and I, the, whatever situation I'm in, yeah. uh, you know, um, instead of just skimming the top few pages. Yeah. And uh, I'm, you, I'm willing to do that. So if you want to have me as a CEO of a company, yeah. I could do that. Uh, uh, and I just, to. yeah, and I just focus on that particular thing, no, I, I know like, it inside out. And yeah, I, 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 I love that mindset. And um, I feel like that's the kind of, uh, the, the, the reason why you're doing so many things now, because <laughs> you can't stay. Because no one wants me for any one thing. So I've got to do little bits of each. <laughs> no, because you picked you rather be doing many things than just doing one thing. Yes. That's the truth. Um, things are exciting because of that. Yeah, um, exactly. I've got to say, it's like, oh, you know, I, I speak to someone about computer games and it's good. And then uh, I'll speak to someone about, oh, car drifting and oh, cars and this and that really excites me. You're driving around, see cars on the road. And I'm like, I don't understand how people don't understand why people like cars because they're just there you get to use them all the time um then you know oh fighting is like athletic sports cycling all these things and i i can converse with so many people about different things yeah but um yeah like top layer of like top couple of pages because yeah. i don't know it in depth because i don't really care so much about it but i just enjoy yeah you don't need uh, to go in yeah, depth yeah. or it, it would be better to specialize mm -hmm. in something if you're specialized if yeah. you spend uh if that's your full-time gig yes you know, yes if that's yeah. a full-time gig but i think the reason why i i don't specialize mm -hmm. is because i do too many things what, what potentially not potentially, yeah. definitely. Yeah, definitely do too. Yeah, but it's, things, yeah. it's all good, man. It's, yeah. uh, it's the, that's the way you rather have it. Yeah. Okay, what... So, you spend a good amount of time also in UK and over here. Yeah. Where has the better food? 
Well, here, of course. Here, of course. Not, but, even, uh, a, it's it, not even close. Because, no, you can you can get, like, whatever star restaurant, if you can afford that over here. Yeah. You can get the best of the best. I mean, you can do that in London, but then I don't know if London prices are You don't have the best Malaysian stuff. No, they don't. They don't the Nasi Lemak's, like, 25 yeah. ringgit. It doesn't taste the same, it's, 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 it's not the same, no. You yeah. can't... Actually, you could probably get about the same. Uh-huh. But uh, the, the Nasi Lemak that you get after cycling 100 kilometers in mm. Ululangat, mm. unbeatable. So you see, there's, there's different because you earn it, you know. Okay, so what what is now cycling is your thing? What is it about cycling that you just going well crazy? First of all, I'd like to thank my sponsor, uh, uh, Pink Bike BMC uh-huh. and PJ, because they've given me the supercar of bicycles, and uh-huh. I'm out there. Uh-huh. And what I like about it is I've got the pressure of national athlete, not really <laughs> national athlete, and it's like super bike, super bike. Okay, I'm gonna have to push this shit hard, uh-huh. and uh, uh-huh. yeah, it makes me perform. What I like about it is I've always loved cycling. And two, now I've found another sport where I'm able to push my limits. I can't tell if you're ripping a promo or not. Hey, this is a mixture of both. Man. Yeah. I'll, I'll bring out all my sponsors. Uh, yeah. It's okay, yeah. Yeah, okay. How, what's, what's a typical workout for you on a bike? On a bike? Yeah. Okay. Um, so because of my injury on my wrist, I've been mm. unable to cycle for... Um, what like nine nine ten weeks at all because i couldn't put any pressure on it but when they pull the metal out and they pull the metal out about maybe three weeks ago now yeah so you got got back already yeah a week later i i I got back to malaysia Mm. and uh i went cycling so i cycled from my house uh i was worried about my my cardio so my house is like uh chalasish klish so i went over umpung lookout point down up book at hand two and then back over the reverse lookout points about 45 kilometers and uh, just testing to see what my ability was okay. and it, it wasn't great but that's there's a lot of uh, hill going on there what? so it's good tell me about the crash dude where okay. was this oh this this the crash mm. that was in brighton there's a video actually on my oh you Instagram. were back in uk yeah, i was back in uk okay you know, again video so on 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 ig who so, was recording or it was your GoPro? I was recording with my GoPro and my mouth might have had something to do with the reason why I messed up. Yeah, it probably was. Um, but anyway, oh, um, you know, um, so, okay, here we go. Here's a little, so this is, I just got muscle ups down. And uh, so muscle ups were done at uh, 4 p.m. So you, I could do muscle ups. I'll just send this to me. Okay, uh, you go ahead, you go ahead. Yeah, cause I wanna, there, there are two. There's another one with a slow motion version of, of me crashing yeah, as well. I w- this is where you realise I haven't got Let's Get It on my... No, it's okay, found it. Ha 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 ha. I'm following? No, you're not. But I'm not. It's all good. No, actually, not you okay. are, you are. Yeah, is it? you are. Yeah, all right. You are. Okay, cool. Yeah, you're a nice guy. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> you pretend but like you're not. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> I'm the bad guy if I need to be. In Malay movies, yeah. I'm always the bad guy. Yeah, anyway, false. so... The colonizer. Yes, the colonizer Fucked with, up, a, with a goatee. Yeah, I know. The stereotype has to go. And I always die. Always. Yeah. Oh, goodness. But yes, yeah. so with that... Um, they don't want to pay you more. They, they don't want to pay <laughs> so me more. They, yeah, they don't, don't want to have, have me in the sequel. Even Jay Revolucci, I died. Wait, okay. Have you done any movie? Um, any movies <laughs> where... Sorry, we're jumping. But yeah, we uh, always jump. Yeah. yeah, have you done any movies where you didn't have to be fighting? Um. Yes, yes. Yes, sir? Yes, sell okay. out. Just out on Blu-ray right now. Uh, you can uh, order the comedy, that. It's a comedy, right? Yes, check out the... Uh, it's it's uh, the most um, highly decorated Malaysian film of all time, I believe. Sell out? Yeah. Is it on Netflix? No. No, it's on Blu-ray. Okay. I just told you. Uh, so <laughs> go, go to my Instagram. Uh, check out the link in the bio and you can buy it. You can buy the Blu-ray for... I don't know if you've got a Blu-ray player. There. PlayStation? You got a play. You're you're got a PlayStation, right? Anyway, kids uh, have a PlayStation. So you got PlayStation. With you can computers. watch me with a soya bean machine. Compute my computer. I just built does not have a Blu-ray player. Dude, no one has a Blu-ray player. You, you be quiet, right? Anyway, no, no, um, I didn't have a computer though. No, right? Yeah, you got it's a computer. It's not good if it doesn't have a Blu-ray player, is it? You 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 go buy the Blu-ray okay, off the okay. link in my bio. And I'm gonna add an Amazon link for mm-hmm. Blu-ray player as well mm-hmm. in, yeah. in the bio. Promo code. And What's can, the promo code? And I'll get a promo code. Uh, yeah, and everything. Peter so, <laughs> Yeah, Peter, Peter Blu-ray old AF uh, player. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, no. So yeah. Now that's been remastered, and that uh, yeah, that mm. was uh, back in 2009, I think we shot that. Okay. So <clears throat> before the fights. Mm. Uh, and uh, whilst I was doing okay. modelling and and TV commercials, so after that, uh, most of your acting gigs, uh, you're always involved in like fight scene or <laughs> some characters gonna be beating, uh, beating up some dude. I think more so. Yes, people. Then you get uh, st- you get you get stereotyped. 
And uh, yeah, it's okay. It's not offensive. It's it's not bad. I've got an, another, and an, one of the projects potentially coming up now again. I'll be fighting, mm. and uh, <laughs> another project also I'll probably be fighting. Yes, there's a lot of fighting going on. Okay. Even, even I did a a, a movie for uh, called Black and White for China. Um, oh, I, I was I was fighting. Yeah, as, and then I in deleted. There was also a fight scene, mm. but delete is good. You got to see that. But I, I, I keep my London accent better than uh, in the movie. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's funny. It's, it's funny. Just watch it. For is me. that is that on uh, it Netflix? And it's just still in this gosh darn cinema. It's not on Netflix yet. Okay. Give, give it a minute, Ben. <laughs> Jesus, God, hold your horses. Okay, it's, okay, and it's, okay. It will be on Blu-ray soon after. All right. Um, all right. <laughs> But no, that's still still rolling pretty hot in uh, Singapore right now. Sure. So I'm hoping Singapore yeah. uh, calls me back out to do some stuff in Singapore because yeah. I, I like I like working in Singapore. Sing dollar, uh, <laughs> it's really yeah, good. Yeah, but uh, no, I, I love I love Singapore as well. Okay. But the, the attitude of Singaporeans versus Malaysians is very different. Yeah. Oh, tell um, me about it. Yeah. You gotta but, pick a side, though. Uh, you, you, do you? I'm always on that gosh darn fence, and I'm going to say yeah. the same here. Um, no but way you're I, on the I, I offended I offended some some of my Singaporean producers because I'm I'm joking around yeah. I've got this English humor thing I like mm. to take the piss out of everything yeah see a Malaysian wouldn't be offended yes and I was like oh the the, the Singaporean food is nowhere near as good as the Malaysian food and I just said that yeah. like but then they they thought I was being serious you are I, being I serious kind of, you know but you know if a joke is fu- to be funny there has to be an element of truth in it as well truth plus plus offensive yeah yes that's I, the magic th- th- spot it's a magic spot yes yeah. but the food I did have in Singapore it was phenomenal as yeah. well and the, the western food in Singapore is unbelievable as well but the food that I really liked that they had it was some prawn sort of laksa it was great they have it better in Malaysia okay what, what but of course it is better in Malaysia but I mean we're, 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 we're talking course. like percentages here points of percentages uh, sure. for some items uh, okay. for some items but it was all it all was made in Malaysia first it's not Singapore that's a guarantee no man <laughs> yeah exactly it came from Malaysia though. They're, they're, I'm not saying that the taste is different uh, a bit uh, you know and the quality of the food is very good in Singapore but it came from Malaysia you no know, you're talking about the quality of the environment yeah, not the food was, okay no, the I, food I itself the food in well. Malaysia is better on the whole it's easier to get good food in Malaysia. Do you know the difference between bakute in S- Singapore and over here? Not really, no. Okay. Um, but I know I used to eat bakute when I eat, ate meat and I, I love a bit of bakute. Okay, you know what? I did. I why? Did. Let, let, let's jump to this. Like, and see, we're doing this jumping again. Yeah, I, yeah. I, feel like, I feel like Super Mario here. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Um, well, how long have you been on this vegan diet? Is it vegan? It's not vegan. Those crazy mother suckers. <laughs> bloody, they're messed up. No, yeah. I, but I understand. Are you I no, but the, the Climate thing is, change? Do you? I I do, but the, <laughs> you know, but at the same time, um, it, it's it's tricky. Okay, let's go. Yeah, so up? I'm 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 pescatarian, which is a yes. weak ass vegetarian, basically. Yeah, you can um, eat fish. Yes, it's it's. Um, I don't go looking for the fish, but sometimes I I'll if it's on the table, I'll eat it. I won't order meat. I I try eggs. not to order too much fish. Yes, I'll have eggs. Yeah, because you know. I mean, I'll try and get free range eggs, kampong, kampong talo, you know, that kind of stuff is like free range. Um, but, you know, you, you can't, with, with the kind of job I've got, it's very hard to be a nitpicky uh, person, mm. like, uh, because so people what, just offer you food. That I like animals, number one, so I'd rather not kill them. That, that is a huge, huge yeah, That's a, the thing. biggest yes. reason for you. So I'm going to eat eggs. Uh, I'm going to eat fish, mainly because I'd go out and hunt the fish if I wanted to eat it. Um, oh, you do fishing yeah, as well. No, I, I don't do fishing. No, I don't, I don't, I don't, don't do fishing. But no, I, do, I was just, I was just, at home that I was just calling myself out there yeah, yeah. Uh, about the fish. But yeah. no, um, no, typical pescatarians. It, yeah, if you, if you if you have if if you want to go and be a hunter gatherer, mm. I mean, if if I was out there hunting, man, I go find a cow and I yeah, kill it and I no eat it. Eating it. I've no problem with that yeah. at all. But. Mass farming is Factory bad for the farming. environment. It's yeah. bad for the environment. You're calling it's, me a, as, an asshole. I, I am calling you an asshole. Uh-huh. It's definitely bad for the Fuck. environment. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely bad for the animals. It's bad for everything. On the whole, yeah. yeah. But I mean, there are ethical farms. There's no farms. argument there. Yeah. At the end of the day, things you do get killed and, you know, the animals do get killed mm-hmm. uh, if, if you're farming them and they're getting killed because you bred them in the first place, essentially. Yeah. However, you know, if you're going to go vegan... The the argument is I had a the, I was speaking to the uh, the the CEO of uh, of Mercedes at the time over here mm. and um, he was like yes but because he was against the vegan thing he's like no I don't agree with it because if you if you if you 
grow a, a field full of avocados it's always bloody avocados you know you're gonna have to kill all the all the animals and the thing and yeah. da, 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 which is true it's true which yeah. is why the wheat vegan yeah. argument does not work yeah. either he's also a ceo so he's no he's way, a ceo no way he's a fucking vegan I, I know there's no way he's a vegan he has to just do what he's got to get yeah. to uh, do to, to to get get yeah. it going on but uh no at the same time no i, I respect what he's saying for that and uh um, yeah well, well, well um what was your argument to him no and it wasn't an argument i said no i agree because it's true <laughs> and uh you know but that, that's why i still i was pescatarian at the time of that mm. but i was just saying i was like pushing the fact but but when you become when you become a vegetarian or a vegan spiritual journey it, well, there, well there's that but the thing is you become a bit of a cunt as well uh, because you're like <laughs> um i'm gonna push my my thoughts and views yeah, on you yeah. so it's like finding a new religion it is exactly yeah. the same as finding a religion and then you think oh i found this religion i'm exactly special that. hang on mother suckers have been doing this for Dec- s- decades centuries Mille- yeah exactly yeah. so you're not you're, an atheist. you're not fucking special i'm an atheist as well so okay. the thing is uh i'm very happy with you doing whatever you're doing yes as long as you don't fuck up the status quo uh, basically um, don't push your shove your bullshit don't in my mouth. shove your bullshit down my mouth because okay, it literally bullshit. is it is is shit um, <laughs> and, uh, literally if you're shoving it down it's turning into shit and it, you, you're you're doing it for the wrong reason mm. um, I've got Muslim friends of course I've got Christian friends yeah, Catholic yeah. friends yeah. there are wrongs and rights in each of these things I'm sorry you cannot be perfectly 100% right doesn't matter I'm not 100% perfectly right of course yeah. I'm 99.9% okay. so you're 100 <laughs> no, no, I'm 99.9 okay, <laughs> okay yeah, but sorry no. You know, but that, that's it. And I mean, do you believe in aliens? I probably believe. I've watched too many of those bloody TikTok is oh, my conspiracy shit. theory shit. Oh, anyway, are you but, flat earther? Which one? Flat, flat earther. I know, but I've I've been watching flat earth stuff recently. Oh. Fuck, it's oh, like yeah? it's convincing, but it's oh. obviously stupid. But then, I've not been to space, have I? So yeah, yeah, how yeah. am I gonna? But mathematical equations. I haven't died, have I? Uh, exactly. Yeah. But you don't know. Are we in a simulation? We probably are. But uh, I it's just. Just enjoy your shit, all right? Don't push your agendas onto other people. Yep. Don't be a cunt and get on with it. That's it. Yeah. Enjoy. Okay. And that's it for today's episode. Whoa. That is it. <laughs> Don't be a cunt. Uh, literally, that's it. That's this. This is this. This is the thing. Yeah. Do the best you can and don't be a fucking cunt. So your first, um, the the main reason was because of the animal. Oh, quality. animals. Back to animals, yes. right? Is yes. there a second? Is there I a like second animals. Um, I it's bad animals. for the environment. You love eating the animals. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> okay, it's bad for the environment. Um, but what I'd say to you, uh, as, as you see, what you're doing right now is, is, is extremely uh, hypocritical. Is, uh, d- yeah, no. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> but um. The okay. thing is, I I don't think you should give up meat. You should... Uh, the, the infrastructure is there already. It, it works. But people should lessen it. People should get the balance right. Um, unless you're doing keto, then people all you do is eat animals. Shit, you know? Yes. They should be hunting. Hunt, 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 hunting, gathering. It would be nice... If if you want to go and eat your KFC, if you had to go and kill a chicken, I know lots of people are quite happy killing chickens or animals or whatever. It's fine, but it, it'd just be... What if you raised the chicken just Exactly. Yourself? I know Chinese families that would be happily like, oh, it's okay, goodbye. Yeah, my dad it's, it's, used to do that. Exactly. Yeah. But the, the, the guy's obviously mental but no Whoa. no but no no what i mean is yeah. he's mentally very strong yeah. to be able to do that uh-huh. to forge that connection yeah. and have that relationship but be he's able to keep it man. at arm's length it's, being a real it's, man it's, it's, it's kind of real man yeah. yeah but I, I i don't know it's i who am i to say what's mm. right and what's wrong yeah. but i know in my heart what i feel so and that i'm a cunt did, yes exactly i know Fuck. deep down in my heart uh, we all know you're yeah. a cunt that's it. Uh-huh. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. no, 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 no. You're not uh-huh. a proper cunt. You're just a. I'm a cunt, but you're a prick. I know exactly, prick. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And what do pricks do to cunts? They they tell them they're cunts. No, they come to preach you know, their it's, bullshit. It's, you know, it's, you, what do well, pricks what, do to cunts? In in, in 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 biology, what does a what prick. happens with it? You do, it's, and he fucks them up. Yes. Fuck, okay. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> no, just, but, but no. Um, yeah. Um, basically, it's just uh, just have less for your own health benefits. You have sponsors, right? Can you be seeing all this? Yeah, Whoops. no, my, my sponsors are slowly dropping off anyway. So, <laughs> so it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. No, I'm fine. But no, um, 
With, with regards to animals, vegans. I like vegans. Vegans, uh, pescatarian, sorry. Pescatarian, Don't get offended. No, ve- the, uh, the pescatarian is because I'm a weak vegetarian, okay? Mm. Um, Pussy shit. Yeah, exactly. Mentally, yeah. I'm not strong enough to just say no all the time. But also because I don't like to waste food, and I, I will, I will DBKL your plate of food. Mm. Um, that that's, that's that's the thing. I'm going to yeah. do that. All right, and also, it, it's a mo- moderation thing. Mm. I still am able to get protein from my fish and yeah. stuff. But then after watching programs like uh, Sea Spiracy, then you realise that maybe on land farming is not as bad as under the sea fish trawling yeah. it's like you can't win you can't um win. so again in every situation moderation, moderation. yes yes don't overdo it yeah and yeah that, that that's no, all jokes aside it. i uh the one i i have no argument against yeah, it's, com- exactly. it's completely right you know you don't um maybe you know you don't you you i mean the fact that you can admit it yourself you're not mentally strong enough to push away yeah. all temptations yeah exactly but you do what you can yes I, 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 and when I you think want to. I do something towards the greater good a little bit a t- so a you're better bit. than me <laughs> fuck yeah fuck I'm better I'm stronger I'm uh, faster I'm greater yeah yeah but no that's the thing um, but mm. if you're like pure vegan mm. generally you're not very healthy okay uh, after a few years you can physically see there are some issues going on I think and then yeah. if you're an activist, you're pushing the ideas onto other people and it's a bit a bit dodgy. I mean, there are vegan athletes and stuff, but I, I don't know how long that lasts. Um, I, I mean, please, please correct me. Uh, the, okay, me so know. for example, there's a vegan powerlifting champion. Right. But if you actually go and check it out, oh, the lifts that he does and uh, compared to the skill of competition that he is doing compared to people who eat meat. Right. Different. Total different level. Yes, different level. So, so, so in the vegan weightlifting competition world, mm, you're see, a that's, winner. That, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> he's he's the big fish, so mm. to speak. So, um, yeah, that, that 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 is the thing. I I don't think humans. I mean, hunter gatherer is is kind of a thing. We weren't supposed to eat as much meat as we do. I put that. I put uh, that. I I can guarantee it's it's about it's about money. How much money you had? The more money you had, the more meat you could eat. So, so I was working in uh in Melbourne, Australia, in Zara. Yeah. So um we were in the back room, storeroom, and this dude who is my colleague, right? He's got a real clean and nice beard, and it's done real well. And then his hair is really basically he's a full on hipster, right? Mm. He's got lots of piercings, and he was telling me about vegan, right? And he was saying like, did you know that um if you ate any sort of raw meat right now, you would fall sick. We are not meant to eat meat. And then he he started to say. Imagine if, you know, you told back then in the a uh, hundred years ago, you told someone that a black person is not supposed to be a slave. They think you're crazy. It's like saying a cat was not a dog. It's true. And at, true. That, at that point, I was thinking, oh, um, it sounds convincing, but I forgot about it immediately and <laughs> ate some and just <laughs> and ate some meat. Went off to uh, the burger shop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, that that's the thing. He's um, probably not vegan now. He's probably not vegan. He's <laughs> yeah, just I, I he's, know, he's just a complete bloody hipster. Yeah, yes, he, okay. he didn't make it. He didn't make the cut. He didn't make the cut. But no, yeah. um, yeah, no, it, education's a big thing. But the problem is the mm. education that we're getting is controlled by uh, people with money. People with money are telling us we uh, look uh, even in England yeah. or America. Uh, you get filtered down news. Uh, yeah. And America especially, maybe not so much. England is generally a bit more, a bit better, I think. Is it really news. though? But a bit I don't, better, yeah, a I bit, can, a I bit can better. accept that. But America, yeah. you know, all the news you get, okay, look, if you do, okay, all the news you get mm. uh, about the COVID things, there's always an agenda. Mm. You've got, was it CNN and uh, whatever, the, the news, they're all on different sides of the political yeah. scope. Everything has an agenda. The yeah. news is... Just there to control the masses. Okay, um, in England, it's not as bad as that. Not by any means. But the different news channels do have different agendas as well. But there are only a couple. So during the COVID period, right, they were pushing a certain vaccine. Yeah. I mean, there's also a big coincidence. Is it a coincidence that no. that the pharmaceutical companies that made the vaccines are sponsoring the exact news channel? No, no, it's, it, a coincidence? It, it's not a coincidence. It's money. Money makes money, and yeah. uh, at the back end, it's it's just the way it's done. Yeah. Uh, and um, the people at the top are always going to be manipulating people. You, you know what I, I I felt during the COVID period, right? It's like you 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 felt like you had COVID. No, no, no. I probably had it many times. I didn't check. I I got it. 
once. You actually so checked? I had real what COVID. Pussy. I went to pick mm. up my uh, my kids. Girlfriends. Oh, yeah, my, you got my, kids? Yeah, I got, I got kids. Oh, shit. I, there are maybe more I don't know about, but... Um, How old are you, children? <laughs> yeah. I mean, there may be others, yeah, but yeah. The, the, the two that I know of, yes, um, eight and twelve. Okay, so I went to pick them up, yeah, and big. you know they go to the temperature centers, right? Yeah, yeah. I was feeling a little bit, you know, warm, uh. Uh, and it's like it's peaky like COVID um, outbreak as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just before all the lockdowns, was it? Mm. Or the, I don't know. I was out picking up the kids from school, yeah. so it can't. I don't know whereabouts it was. It was the uh-huh. first time before the lockdowns happened. And, uh, you mean went, it, it was at their school? Yeah, and I went to the bakery so oh, okay. to pick up some snacks for okay. later. And then you walk in and the temperature sensor, you got to go through the temperature yeah, gauge, yeah. you got to scan in my Sajatra. And then it went, do, 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 and the alarm yeah. bled off. And I was like, oh, shit. And fuck. I backed up and like walked to where Grab the kids and run. And I was like, shit. Okay, what the hell? Because everyone's scared of this shit at the time. It's weird, and dude. It's it was, weird. It's fucking weird. So scary. Uh, just for the fact, because it's not knowing. Yeah. And that's what the scare. And it's like the problem with China is now. They're just, they're fucking up. China's fucking up. Um, please don't send people to kill me. Anyway. Um, are they fucking uh, up or are they fucking up? Upwards. What do you say? No, no, no. But what I mean is the zero COVID policy. Yeah. See, I was like, these Americans are running around because you, when you TikTok is a great source of actual information. Yeah. Although they always delete my videos, mm-hmm. which have got nothing in it for sexual content. I didn't put. Yeah, yeah. Anything. yeah I get I'm the like, same shit. Right. What on earth? Who's reported me yeah, yeah. when I just see some other crazy stuff on TikTok? It's yeah. bizarre. Anyway. Yeah. Um, great source of information on TikTok, but you just see people in America not giving a monkeys about no, no. COVID. And you see, I was like, oh, congratulations, America. Like, what was it? Two, five million cases in a day. I'm like, yeah, wow. Yeah. You got to remember the size of the country as well. Though. Yeah, yeah. But then you're like, shit, that's crazy. But then how many deaths happened? And how many of those deaths are like pure COVID? Yeah. And then they just got on with it. Mm. And by the time I got back to England, my, my mindset had changed through understanding more and i was like um oh. you mean from um when you got back like you were basically your mindset was from living in malaysia and then when you got Li- back- living in asia yeah, like yeah. asia face masks this one that go yeah. back to england Dude, weird. i got back into england oh. and uh, after i'd done all the tests and everything and i, I did all the pre-flight yeah. forms um so this is a, a year and a half later though yeah so after the initial fear seeing america just messing up and we like in asia like <laughs> look mm. at america yeah. bloody bunch of idiots they yeah. are they are a bit stupid and then um but we might have been taking it a little bit too far uh with all the lockdowns but the malaysian government did do a good enough j- job of controlling it through its most uh i wouldn't say infectious periods but at the most dangerous points they definitely did better than america oh, i right? was i was i was surprised by how good it was uh, compared to america especially those I, idiots. i'll tell you what like so this is what i thought during the the covid period so if you were someone who had an issue with the policies that were being put out which is wear your face mask and stand uh three feet or I can't remember how many feet yeah, apart yeah, social, foot, yeah. social distancing if you had a problem with it most of the time you're not gonna say something about it because if you are someone to question it do you have the facts? Did you do your research? You, no one has the facts. Yeah, the that's the thing. It, it, and that's the that's the big problem the big hoo-ha and big confusion yeah. and then when you caught COVID you're like damn now what? Everyone um, looks at you like yeah like yeah. you have the, the lurgy yeah, um, yeah exactly yeah. so it, it was um that was just a crazy time. I, I, okay, I went for I went for a birthday party, and then everyone had to put uh, do a COVID test before yeah. the party started, right? So yes. we walked in and do a test. Yeah, and I was really hyped up for parties. I love parties. Yes. So I I head on over, you know, just had first first two glasses, you know. Yeah. And then I tested positive. Oh, twice. Oh. Okay, and no one came near me. They looked at me like I was <laughs> an alien. They kicked me out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And on on the right back. It's- I felt like, oh shit, am it's, I really sick? Like, it's I could actually feel- an experience that is good to have because it you realize gives who you, your true friends are. Yeah, well, the, the, <laughs> the, 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 there is that. And then you also get to empathize with other people that have had these problems to get scapegoated and sidelined and mm. for all sorts of reasons. Yeah. It's, quite, it's quite an eye opener in a way. So no, it, it was it was it was. I, I but I caught the first COVID, mm. and it was it was pretty weak for me. I was like, "What is this?" It was nothing. Yeah, and then I was out um, cycling. E- easy but coming from you, a fighter. It, exactly. But I've had so many injuries, including this, as a hangover from COVID. I wouldn't have been in England at that time of the year 
doing this if it wasn't for COVID. What literally. do you mean? What's doing this? Your hand? Like my, my hand, my yeah, wrist. Yeah. I wouldn't have damaged that. Yeah. I, I fell off my bicycle at 60 kilometers an hour as well. Yeah. I wouldn't have did that if, done that if, uh, if, if I didn't have the, fit, the fitness level drop from COVID either. Um, all sorts of stuff. It, it's directly, well, or indirectly a cause of COVID. My major injuries. I got second degree burns during COVID lockdowns because I went mosquito hunting and just blew myself the cup so um what wait, wait, yeah. what is mosquito hunting like you with know, the racket just, no i wish uh <laughs> you know mosquito spray a lighter and yeah. uh you went balls off. of flames no just in my house because uh, anyway yeah I, I, um, <laughs> yeah I lost a lot of hair on that day and uh second degree burns that was the most painful thing i wished that i caught covid again instead of doing that and then when i did the 60 kilometer an hour crash i wished i had covid instead of having that because that was like two weeks of like limping around with like no skin but then, yeah, what, what I'm saying is all of that having COVID and all the lockdowns, not able to get out, right? Um, all the wear face masks and, you know, all these distancing yeah. things and all the, it was a great lesson. But then when I went back to England, yep. I went in and I just went through and did it scanned and I was like, all right, well, so that's it? Yeah, that's it. Is that what? It's nothing. Did I, they have an app back back there? They, they, had, they had an app, yes. Yeah, yeah. So I'll tell you about that in a second. So, you, so anyway, I just walked through, and then no one's wearing a face mask. Yeah. And then I, I I went out on New Year's Eve partying. One hundred twenty thousand cases. Yeah, no Everyone's like this, like no yeah. mask. Yeah, I didn't yeah. catch it. Uh, or maybe and, they wore the mask before they got into the bar, the, the, and then they take it off. No, no, no one wears a mask at all okay. over there. But but also. And another thing is it's they in probably inflated the numbers on the news to yeah. try and keep, get people to stay at home. <laughs> it didn't work, but they, they, they do that as a control. It's a, it's a control news. So anyway, regarding this, this is another thing about how lax England is when you mm. think England's so strict. Malaysia was much better like the COVID yeah. uh, centers. Oh, you know? It was very strict. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. It was very strict. You know, you got the moisture jar for everything's done, dusted. So when I flew back to England, you got to have a passenger locator form that you have to fill in. Okay, when I'm flying, and you can only do it 48 hours before you fly. And then you need to get your PCR test before you fly. You need to fill in the forms. You need to upload all the data. You need to buy uh, a, a two-day test. So when you land, yeah, yeah, yeah. you get this all done. So anyway, I got back. And quarantine then after, as well, right? Sorry? Quarantine in the hotel uh, as well. Quarantine right? in the hotel. But that was like the week before. And so I got back and it changed. All the rules are changing. So I got oh, back okay. and I walked in. I was like, that was it? Yeah, they're nothing. Just go ahead. So I went in. I waited for my two-day test, which I'd booked like a few days be uh, before, oh. uh, and it was it was necessary for me to buy it in Malaysia from from England. Yeah. So it's a really bloody expensive. It's like one one ringgit over here for a test. It's a like hundred and thirty ringgit no fucking for a bloody wait, yeah, talking a about PCR in, and like a, a regular a regular wait, quick in, test in, in England. Yeah, but I mean that, that one the RTK. yeah because you need to, yeah RTK because you needed to get it from a registered. A uh, hundred thing. ringgit. Yes. So it's like 20 pounds. 100, 100, 130 ringgit it was, yeah. And, uh, about 25 pounds. Yeah, and that was the cheapest one on the list I could find as well. And so you go to a pharmacy to get it, right? Or, we, or, you could do, but no. But they had what? to send no. it to you. You had to pre-book it on the English app. Oh. And again, it's just like, who's paying money to be a registered company to get money from the... So it's, it, everything's always stacked against you. Anyway, I landed, waited for that to come through the post. It didn't come through the post until like six days later. It looked like, like it had been kicked around the room a hundred times. And then I had to, I did the test, it was negative. Mm. And I did a written NHS test when I got there, it was also negative because I was with my parents. Yeah. But then I tried to sign in to uh, get the get the code to refill in the passenger locator to say it was okay. I never even did that because the code and passwords didn't work. So I never filled in the passenger locator thing. England just threw the whole system in the bin. They didn't care. Then yeah. there's the NHS app. And then before I came back out to Malaysia, I had to do like a, a COVID jab, a booster. And then I was the only person for the whole day that went to get a booster shot. No one cares. Yeah, no one England's cares. crazy. It, it's crazy. So what I'm saying is Malaysia did a really good job. So uh, <laughs> Kyrie, good job. So is, is, go. is that really what you're saying? I'm it, a little it bit skeptical. I, I, like, I'm, I'm, I'm saying they did a very good job of controlling and... Uh, making sure that everything was registered and it was a bit over the top maybe but it did the job no yeah yeah um and then it covid levels came down to suitable levels uh like the suitable amounts controllable amounts no mm. big outbreaks mm. things could start to open up again slowly i mean mm. it wasn't perfect but there was no perfect there was COVID no perfect lockdown okay what matters world. is now we're back to normal yeah pretty right? much but now i'm just much broker 
Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it, it, it was yeah. a hard two, two, two years plus. Yeah. So, yeah. so fuck the government. Oh yeah, no. Uh, hey, oh, hey, oh, I, I've, well. I've got to say, fuck mm. COVID and fuck yeah, the fuck people COVID. that created COVID, which is the big, big farm. Big farm. Big farm. Definitely you big think farm. So? You fucked think so? over the world. Yes, not, definitely. Not the the fucking what do you call it? Monkey monkey experiment in Wuhan. No, I not don't even. Th- I don't even think it was Wuhan. I think there's think it's been the farmer, new straight up the farmer. straight up big farmer releasing it in America. Well, they got us though. They got us good. They got us good. Yes, fucking good, dude. I, I've got to say, yeah. And now they're still making money off it. They're still right now making money. So it's, it's like, fuck. We got for the whole world. It's been. Fun. Yeah. I don't even think it was China. I don't think it was China. But what if Big Pharma is behind all of this, right? And right now everything has pretty much toned down. Mm. Is there going to be another one? What? what? Of course there yeah, will. Right. Of course there will. Of course there will. They're, they're so they're, successful. They're they're orchestrating behind closed doors. Definitely, they have to be, don't they? Because they right now the money is starting to slow down. Yeah. So what can we do yeah. in ten years' time? Yeah. By the way, this is all speculation. It's all speculation. In you, case you never you know. Didn't know. However, yeah. it sounds it's, interesting, though, right? It, it's it's <laughs> almost likely, almost certain to be true, uh, though. I mean, I, uh, I, I mean, true how, as a speculation. how are you going to get so many? So I I don't know, but I it, it's it's so difficult. And I mean, the COVID thing, mm. and again, the Malaysian government doing this and that, whatever. Mm. Um, it, it was fine. I I remember seeing, you know, lots of people like anti-vax and so on. And then I was watching, I can't remember the name of the lady. She yeah. was saying, you know, she spent a long time testing the COVID vaccination and doing a really good job doing all of that. Like like a whole year yeah, bullshit. Uh, of, uh, yeah. but she, she's either a very good actor yeah. or I empathize with her because what was she? the information she was getting across is like, we've been doing so, so much work to create mm. this COVID vaccination. And then you guys are just fucking it all up. And I, I understand that as well, but yeah. then also at the no, same but, point, it's like, who do you trust? Yeah, but also how how much they they said that they they did all this research on the vaccine, no? But then other other scientists and doctors come out and they're saying like, you need a specific amount of time to actually yes. test proof everything. Exactly, and that time was not allowed. That so time's not allowed. Who are you yes, believe? they were saying about. Uh, I was watching again. Uh, it, it was a bit on TikTok. It's like the AIDS vaccination. It's like, oh yeah, no, it's good. And then we test the the AIDS AIDS not vaccination AIDS AIDS pill on one person, and it worked. And we test two people, and it works. So then we what we do is we we then give it to you know a hundred people. It, it works. Then then a thousand people it works. And then twelve years later, it doesn't work. Everyone is dying from that pill. For yeah. example, yeah, yeah, because so you, you can't test you the future. can't test the future. You don't yeah. know. So I mean, I I. <sighs> And, and apparently, vaccination-wise, yeah. people are getting all these clots that, you know, like, you got all these clots that are, like, yeah. vein, like, plastic because of the vaccinations. Yeah. I don't know, man. Did you get so. paranoid during COVID because of uh, thinking thinking about... I mean, if you want to really jump into that that uh, rabbit hole yeah. of uh, thinking that we are literally nothing but sheeps and we everything, are. everything that we are... We were so controlled. I had a psychologist on just... Uh, I, I, do, I saw it. Yeah, 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 and she she was literally um saying like how all school systems teach us not to they don't teach us we are not taught to to learn we are taught not to not to uh, question oppose authority. Yes, and the thing is, I I got kids, and sometimes I'm like fuck, I'm telling them. To do they behave. go to public or they go to Chinese school? So, Chinese school, though. So I'm yeah. telling them not to do this, not to do that. I'm like, mm, this is going against all the entrepreneurs what they're telling me to do on TikTok, and I'm like. Oh, but they have to have some sort of level of respect. Yeah. You have to find that balance again. So it's like eating meat. <laughs> it's, just, it's about balance. Everything's about, okay, okay, about oh, yin, balance, balance. Yin I, and yang. I eat vegetables too, fruits as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, good, 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 good for you. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so we we were talking. I I talked about this as well. You you grew up in a what do you call it? Montessori? It's pretty much Montessori school system, right? Me which in is, England, yeah, which is a no, not not really. It's just we just we just like you do Chinese school here, but mine's just English school there. Yeah, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> um, I I assume that's what they uh, Montessori is what they call Western uh, type of school syllables. So it's a big difference because I was teaching in uh, kinder kindergarten right. in. Uh, um, Melbourne so their school system is so so different right a big example so we had to do basically activities for them to do and then you got to write the report you know how they have learned or how it's going so I brought 
to school the kids were about four to five year olds i brought to school a paper and i did you know what a tra- like a tracing paper so i was writing alphabets you know i want to teach the kids how to to write numbers and yeah. alphabets and the teacher looked at me like she knew that i was some kid from asia okay he, she <laughs> knew exactly that i'm a right that stereotypical asian mindset and it's not the first time she's seen this and she just straight away said why why are you teaching that? why are you bringing academic stuff to school you know no, like, the english school is not Monte, uh, is, is is not not like, what's the name again is montessori it? yeah it's not montessori style yeah. it's 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 uh, similar to lo- it's Malaysian. regular malaysian school style oh yeah, yeah. We, you guys colonized us yeah, exactly you, yeah. you, you you are dealing with what we left ah okay uh, but no yeah. we don't have Mon- system, montessori man. style we don't have montessori style yeah, so but i mean like in singapore when i was doing the the age super super baby thing yeah we went to like montessori style left uh-huh. brain right brain training and stuff like that uh you know and you got like uh sensory training so no yeah. no 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 no. but i mean what i'm saying is oh, like okay. the australian style would be yeah. more like that in the month yeah, yeah yeah exactly yes. yeah so the teacher was pissed off you know she was saying like why once they go into primary school right they have all the time in the world to pick up uh, academics right right now they want to focus on the kid being able to immerse himself in yes. a bigger social yes. system which is your school the first time ever you're going to be immersed in a place where there's going to be clicks yes, you know yes, first yes, time yes. ever yes. and it's going to be and also you're maturing a lot a- a- Asian parents are a bit afraid to let go of the hand of their child I think and that's that's why you don't have so much Montessori style stuff it's everyone's like they want to be there they want to make sure that they're learning now um, to yeah, Asian styles like learn now, and then you know you can be really clever later because you you got the head start. Whereas a, a Western style, Australian style, let's yeah, say, yeah, uh, so not really Western. It's like just down down stairs, south, yeah, down by south. west. Um, that is, <laughs> yeah. they're they're more interested in uh, you know just getting the kids to have a happy life and uh, enjoy themselves and play school. The word play yeah. in the school yeah. should be kind of a, a clue to but, that, I guess. So I, when, when I was in the teaching in the kindergarten, right, literally what the kids did all day, all day mm-hmm. was play. I yes. tried I tried to tell the kids play with this and the teacher got pissed at me. Like, don't tell them what to play with. Yeah, they don't. play with what they want to play with. They will find their own way. And that, that, that's, that's true. That's true. Another example, the kid was walking up, uh, climbing up the, the slide. Yeah. He's a, it, it was his first time. Yeah. And I was just standing by Look, side. Look, hard. Stop climbing yeah, up the side. Yeah, I was it's standing like, by side. And the, 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 the teacher was like, no, no, just sit down. Just, just right. let him die. I'm like, what if he falls? And they're like, it's okay, he'll learn. Like, no, he might die. He, he'll either learn or he won't learn. Uh, exactly. You know? <laughs> and they're fine with him maybe not learning. <laughs> Permanent damage. Um, yeah. yeah. But no, uh, it's, you've got to, again, strike that balance. And it, it's, yeah. it's difficult. Yeah. It is very, very difficult. It's not um, black and white. That's no, sure. it's not black and white. And... Um, no, it is good to let kids just go out and do their own thing. It's and it's even even with my kids now. I was like, oh, you got to pass these tests and so on. You got to do this, and but I'm like, does it really matter? No. Uh, if you can speak English, write and read English, you can read, write Chinese. It's going to be useful for you in the future, I think potentially. Okay. So it's just good, and then you have a language base, and then you've got an easy job. You can just go to England and just do translation. And like I've just given you a free pass, like you don't even have to work hard now. Yeah, um, <laughs> I, I don't know. I always feel like that mindset really, really comes from being um, oppressed and colonized. And <laughs> but, but, but but then again, right? You know, the the school system I, was brought from the colonizers I, himself. I, I, the, 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 that's the school system from the colonization. However, but like, yeah, Singapore is also a bit like that, I guess. Mm. But like places like China, it's very you've got mm. to learn really hard yeah. but now China is changing like I said from IQ to EQ yes um, so parents will spend like hundreds of thousands to to do these extracurricular classes True. but I know my, 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 my family in East Malaysia it's like you have extracurricular activities you have when I used to go back to, to, to Miri um, so my, my cousins used to do do school mm. come home from school and then I'd see them for about, you know, an hour or something. And then they'd go out and they'd be doing their after-school tuition, come back from that. And I'd hardly see them throughout the day. And that's that's a kid's life for Asian Asian style. Like, especially Malaysian. Yeah, Asian. yeah. Um, Chinese, Malaysian, Asian. Uh, uh, yeah. Specifically. Um, definitely. Okay, I yes. think we've got to wrap up. But one okay. last simple question. Okay. Okay, does God exist? No, I'm just kidding. That one we'll do it in the um, next... In the next. No, 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 don't, don't, don't. Probably. This, this is going to take... This is going to take... Probably, but what is a God? We're not going to get into that, but, but we'll, we'll, we'll 
You yeah. see, you see, that's gonna take another half an hour. So we'll do that the next time I have Only you on. Only half now. It's gonna be more longer, okay. dude. Right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, no, but so. um, no. If I brought that up, right, it's gonna take a long time. So yeah, let's do it the next time. Yes, okay. Do. And I, I'll, I'll read more than the first two pages. Yeah, I'll, same. I'll, I'm gonna do the same. I'll give you some more details. Yeah, which which side of the fence are you still sitting on, though? Well, the the God exists yeah. thing. Uh, or you don't. Want I to tell believe me? gods exist, but I don't believe in any one god specifically. Okay. Yeah. I geez. think there's no god at all. You don't think there's any god? No. Yeah. no like aliens? You don't see aliens as gods? You don't? No. James James Webb Telescope and uh, and the scientists now like what the no Big Bang oh mother oh, yeah. so, I mean, it's like <laughs> oh everything we thought about and thought that we knew mm. is now so now we have to like mm, question you ourselves. You ever check again. out Graham Hancock? Uh, no. I, okay. Uh, oh, right. Just so, super, send, send me some links. Yeah, more rabbit hole shit. Oh um, no! Yeah, no, it's, a, I'm it's sick amazing of, though. I, I lose hours to this yeah. bloody thing because I'm old. But guess what? I just like watching it. But guess what? This is the type of shit people would love to hear on podcasts. I, I think you know? as I long think as you got the details, we should get some more information together mm. and do some of that because yeah. it's just highly interesting. Even flat earthing. Yeah. No. Um, no. Yeah. Really. Because I mean, doesn't matter if it's right or wrong. You've just been told it's a sphere. Uh, Fuck but you're then, a conspiracy theorist. Yeah, no, I, it is. You're a hardcore it's, one, are you? Aren't I'm not. You? I wouldn't say I'm hardcore. I got to, I'm. I'm. I'm just enjoying a little bit of everything. Oh my god, your kids! Are you telling them about? No, I. I, <laughs> I wake them up in the morning with the TikTok stuff. Okay, because good. Because it's the loud. You're voices. following the program. Yes, it's like yes. wake up. Here you go. But they usually just wake up on the bits of people getting knocked out or something <sighs> instead of conspiracy theories because it's more fun. But yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, we're going to wrap up. Okay. How are you going to edit this? This is like a whole bunch of stuff. Um, You're going to have to like cut in between. I used like to. Jumping around and. No, no, I, I used to, I used to cut out a lot of shit. Now I. I just I, run the whole thing. Yeah, no, I, I, I just cut what is necessary and I don't think there was much necessary you shit to cut. You just bleep me out a few times. Uh, when? Maybe, you don't even remember. Maybe for when I say cunt. Uh, no, no, but, definitely uh, not. Because no, no. I, I can't remember when I said it. <laughs> Uh, uh, you know, it's like because I, it's it's the impacts I took as a. As, as Have a you tried child. stand up? Oh, stand up. Stand I, up. I, I'd I'd like to do that. I've got a whole oh. bunch of ammunition. Yeah, I've. I, it's very I, interesting because yeah. I, I could do panto and I think I can do stand up. No, have Have you gone and checked out a uh, stand up show in Malaysia? I'm supposed to have gone a few times. My friend, uh, you know, I've got friends who are comedians and I'm supposed to have supported them, but I just get so busy. I don't have any time. I've got, I've got to teach classes and teach people how to kick ass, you know? Yeah, sure. So, yeah, I don't have that I did. Time. I did stand up 10 times. Uh, really? Yes, 10 times. I went 10 times. Was it successful? Let's say, okay, let, let's say the 10 times, every time I would do a three-minute set because that's right. what open micers get, right? Right, right. Out of the 10 times, which is 30 minutes in total, the right. amount of time where the people were laughing solid two or three the two out of 30 no yeah two or three out of 30 and is, i think that's that not the worst it's not the it's that's definitely that there's a percentage yeah, in there it's fucking hard uh, where people let's say it was a hard dude imagine when you are writing give, give me a joke no 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 i can't no I what can't, do you mean I no can't, no no i can't, I can't. do it's it worse. do it uh, now uh i can't the pressure okay dude imagine when you're writing a joke Okay, you're you gonna write be, it. I just, I just memorize all the. Uh, no, you got to write it, then you memorize it, right? It's true. This, yeah. See, see how institutionalized he is. Yeah. So you, <laughs> I go by the system. So, <laughs> so I write, I write it, and I'm gonna in my mind, I'm pausing here because yeah. I'm thinking, oh, they're gonna laugh here, yeah, and then they're gonna laugh there, and I'm no pausing here and there, laughing. and I pause a bit la- uh, longer here, yeah, and when I'm right there on stage, and people they look at you like you're stupid, you, yeah. And you're just you because you're 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 telling a joke that makes you sound stupid as well, which doesn't help your cause. Does maybe it? I just was funny. That, that is why, maybe not. That is why mm. I said um, I wanted to do the pantomime comedy because someone's already written the jokes for me. Mm. Now I got to try and make that shit funny. And that's the pussy. I don't shit, know if dude. you if you sit, don't 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 that's don't, pussy don't, shit, bro. don't knock pantomime yeah. until you've done it. It's yeah. uh, throw yourself in the fire. I mean, I it, we yeah, had, kind of did. We had to do <laughs> we had to do Aladdin Aladdin Reloaded, so we had to come back for a second year because it was so popular the first one because I was so good as the evil wizard. Okay, so, yeah, so. So, but, you know, <laughs> I'm just I'm just I'm just telling you, man. But um, yeah, you learn a lot mm. by doing that. Mm about how the crowd is going to react mm. and you can't put expectation you can only put hope sure yeah okay okay you know what last last L- question uh, last yeah. last no, last no no okay, there's the this is the last one okay um if so god exists guys, who's his mother <laughs> okay guys guys remember okay remember uh, peter davis 
He was a former Please MMA remember fighter. Me. He Please. does many other things. Okay, many other things. Don't forget, he gets he gets offended. And also for someone, okay, let's say someone who is um young and he's just finished high school and he's looking to how old, make, how old is that? Because I'm so old. Twelve. Now, I Twelve. Uh, high okay. school. <laughs> no. oh, gosh. Yeah. Right. So for someone who is looking to find his way and not trying to follow the corporate system, right? Which is just go out, have fun. And you, you find something that you enjoy yeah. and, and try and go with that. But then I saw someone on TikTok who's like, look, guys, all the rich people I know, they're just doing boring jobs. They're doing boring jobs yeah. and they're making money out of people's nece- what's necessary in life. So if you want money, do the boring necessities. Yeah, Conor McGregor's pretty rich, though. He yeah, don't seem that boring. It's true because he, he just talks shit. Yeah, he's um, the best at it. He's very good at it. He's yeah. good at talking talking shit, but people like the way he does it as well. Mm. But um, yeah, just go out, Montessori it, find what you enjoy. You can still make a good living from it. Uh, find mm. what you enjoy. And if you're enjoying it, it's not work. But if you're enjoying it, it doesn't feel like work and you're not earning money, it's not working. So you got to kind of, <laughs> uh, again, get the balance. Um, yeah, so what I'm doing, I'm enjoying it. I'm surviving by the skin of my teeth, so it's kind of working, but I might have to head back to an office in the time soon. I would say that lots of people... Just get me into movies, please. <laughs> right. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> okay, guys. Peter, Peter Davis has... Uh, split personality, yeah, yes. Yeah. Split personality and very opinionated. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay, Peter. But I'm on the fence. All no, no. <laughs> okay, Peter. Yeah, I'd uh, love to have you on the next time. And yeah. guys, if you've enjoyed this episode so far and watched till this point, leave a boxing a boxing emoji in the comments. If you and en- listen till this far and enjoyed this episode a lot, leave a boxing emoji with a splash of water, which signif- which symbolizes your jizz. Okay. So I got that right. Yes. So guys. And, and you know maybe we, uh, we could, we off. Okay, we could do a, a TikTok live, and then you could send us Ben some prizes. Yeah, uh, well, you should do that. Uh, sure, sure. Dude, it's, it's, it's wrong. Okay, right? guys, Peter Davis. In case you don't already know, actor, model, MMA fighter. Follow him on socials. Okay, yes. Peter Davis. P- Peter Hugh Davis. Peter Hugh Davis. Yeah. All right, H-U-G-H. on Instagram. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, guys. If you guys like this episode. Press the like button, share it with your friends, leave a comment, okay? Uh, whatever you think about Peter, do you not is agree? Is a complete... Psycho. Yes. yes. Is he a psycho? Yes or no? Who knows? <laughs> you know? Uh, I, yeah. know. I know. I know. Yeah. Uh, and, oh, <laughs> fuck. Okay. Yeah, anyways, guys, appreciate all your support so far, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Give it up for Peter Davis. Have you on the next time. I hope you're clapping. If you're not, fair enough. I'll clap. Thank all you. Right. See Thanks. you guys. Bye, guys. Missing my homies, I'm missing my oldies, my brothers, my crodies. We all went to court, but before only course that we knew were the ones where we were shooting three selling Kobe. To a legend, rest in peace to the old me, rest in peace to my brothers, rest in peace to my whole team. The oldest, I'm missing my shawty.